W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer, but that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's coverage is brought to you by the Small Wood and Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremation Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Freddie Law Firm. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team. So let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. Good afternoon and welcome to Redmond Stadium on the campus of Bloomsburg University here in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, as we get ready for Shepherd Rams football. The Rams coming in at 7-1, and one, the Huskies at 1-7. But it's a team, Travis, that has been competitive throughout the season. The record doesn't really show you the progress this team has made. Consistently, they've been in all of their games this year, just haven't been able to pull out too many wins, just one win on the year. And one of those struggles when you look at this ball club is being able to put up points on the offensive side of the board. They've juggled back before, back and forth between their two quarterbacks. That's uh, Ben Reese, the junior, and also K.J. Riley, the sophomore. Both have come in and had some success, but nobody has really been able to provide that sustained spark that they need to put some more points on the board, only averaging 14.6 points per game that's going to be tough to win some ball games in the PSAC when you're not able to score that many points against your opponents and coming up against a Shepherd team that's putting up over 30 points per game it's going to be a tall task for the Huskies to pull out a win today and you look at it Bloomsburg is a run first football team running back Caleb Monaco approaching 2,000 career rushing yards they got their fullback, Jack Ferguson, who stands at 6'1", 225. Tight end, Nas Jones, mainly a blocking tight end at 6'3", 230. They'll use him in a lot of different ways, if we recall, from last season. So this is a run-first team. They want to run the football. And, you know, they're, they're built to do that. Have a few undersized guys, I would say, up front. Maybe at the tackle position is not your typical, you know, weights at those spots. But still, you know, this is a, a physical football team that's had success running the ball. That's kind of their identity. And you talk about them being undersized, and another thing that jumps off the sheet at you is that they have a lot of underclassmen, not a lot of seniors on this ball club. So you can see that this team is going through their growing pains, and they're taking their lumps, and they're hoping that they're being able to take this difficult experience this year and be able to use that for the growth and maturation when you try to improve going into next year. You touched on Caleb Monaco coming off of a last year where he was second team all PSAC East. He is a very productive football player, had over 500 yards per carry last year, two touchdowns on the ground, also a capable receiver out of the backfield, had 12 catches for 175 yards and a couple of touchdowns last year. And like you mentioned, only 49 yards away from breaking 2,000 yards for his career, and that will make him the 14th Bloomsburg running back to achieve that mark. So certainly a player that Shepard is going to be signaling, going to be signaling out in their scouting report that if they want to keep this Huskies ball club contained, it's going to start with Caleb Monica. And you look at things on the Shepard side offensively, the Rams coming off of their best balanced game, their best game overall with the win over Westchester 59-21. 
and it was nearly equal in the passing yards and the rushing yards a week ago for this team. And they figured some things out with that running game, especially Travis. The passing game has pretty been pretty consistent all season, but running backs Jordan Barnett as well as Malachi Brown both really running the ball well. They combined for four touchdowns and over 170 yards last week. Absolutely, and when you're able to have that, when and that's something that the Shepherd has been striving for, even the past couple of years, is having complementary football on the offensive side of the ball, where you want to have that running game clicking, and that's going to help set up your play action pass again. Like we've mentioned, Seth Morgan, a very efficient quarterback, not a big arm guy that's going to blow the top off the defense, throwing the ball over the top. He does a good job of picking his spots underneath, and when he's able to have that sustained running game, not only that, it's going to help wear down that defensive front and keep those defenders from getting into the backfield and making Seth Morgan get outside the pocket, which he's comfortable doing. He's very good getting outside the pocket, making those off-schedule plays, and taking those checkdowns. So like you mentioned, and Jordan Barnett has really been coming on here as of late, and this last game he had versus Westchester last week, his best game so far in a Shepherd Rams jersey, 13 carries, 106 yards. That's 8.2 yards per carry, also two touchdowns. So not only is the big fellow physical in between the tackles, but he showed last week that he's able to make those break tackles and really pick up some big gains after contact. When you do look at the passing game, Shepard's going to be without Cam Dorner for another week, still do, dealing with that turf toe injury. But we've seen good things all year. Jeremiah Taylor's been their number one and now he's consistently getting over 100 yards and a touchdown. We know what Barry Hill and Cordell Batten can do as well. Batten getting a touchdown last week, and Hill's had some big games. So it seems like this wide receiver core, like usual, drive is pretty deep and, and have a lot of different guys that can make plays for them. And you mentioned two players, and Shepard did a very good job of isolating those two players, and it just gave Westchester fits when they had Taylor and Hill on the same side of the formation. When they had that multiple wide receiver set, Westchester really didn't have any answers for that look, and you could tell Barry Hill has really come on. He had a good game to begin the year, then he had like a lull where he wasn't getting that many targets, and now he's really settled into that slot role where he really seems to be quite effective, especially when you're able to put him next to Jeremiah Taylor, who again has shown with his size and his ability to have that big play capability that gives a spark to this Shepard offense. We'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of this break, we'll here from the head coach of the Shepherd University Rams, Ernie McCook. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Hi, Kresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. We'll now get into our coach's interview brought to you by Parsons Ford. They're located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. We're now joined by the head coach of the Shepherd University Rams, Ernie McCook. Coach, uh, your team coming off of a good win over Westchester 
uh, first kind of blowout game of the year. What did you take away from it? I was really pleased how we played. We played well in all three phases. I think we scored in all three phases. Um, and I thought we did a great job. I thought we played great on defense, well on offense, had some explosiveness, had 200-yard rushers, and special teams was outstanding as always. Your defense has dealt with some injuries this year. You were without Pena, Grantham, Harrison, Batten on Saturday. Uh, but guys stepped up and played well. What, what, do you, what can you say about the guys behind those guys and just your ability to build depth within this program? Well, I believe that's part of the culture of our program, that even the starters are helping the young guys develop so we have great depth within our program. And I, th I just think it's, it's a credit to our coaches. It's a credit to um, the players in the program. Uh, wanting to get better no matter what their role is each and every week. You t mentioned the offense, the running backs each getting 100-yard games. Uh, when you look at the totals, it was the most balanced game of the season, passing and rushing both almost equal. Uh, what can you say about the importance of getting balance and just the way this team's grown offensively? You know, I think I, th I think it's the entire football team has been a young football team and is getting better in all three phases. I was really pleased with the performance offensively. Uh, it, with the balance that you've talked about, uh, the fact that we were able to run the football effectively, have some explosiveness, really is going to help you as an offense continue to score points. Um, I thought the way, you know being able to score a point on the in, on in the kicking game with the punt that hit the kid's foot, um, I, I thought the ball, ball bounced our way. I know there's things we have to be better at, and we're going to work to be better at them. Jeremiah Taylor continues to be your wide receiver one. Uh, what has he brought to this team as a wide receiver that you got uh, this year? He, he has great big play ability. Uh, he makes some plays each and every week that, man, it's, where I'm thankful he's a shepherd ram. Defensively, uh, we've talked about the guys stepping up, but also just the versatility of a lot of the players on your defense. Um, is that something you look at when you're when you're trying to recruit guys to make sure that they can play a lot of different positions? Well, you know, I think everybody we recruit and, and both sides of the ball, we're looking to see where they can contribute. And if we see a player being able to contribute in multiple spots, that's obviously, a, you know, we're going to be more amped up to recruit that guy. Um, and I think you can see that with how our players are playing. Bloomsburg this week. What have you seen from them so far? Their record not great, but they've been competitive in a lot of games. They they've been in every football game they played. You know it's gonna you know it's we're gonna go on the road. It's a tough place to go play. We'll have to have great focus. We'll have to have energy. We'll have to max match their intensity, and we'll have to make plays. Uh, we we have to play smart. Uh, we may have to make ourselves hard to beat. We can't get dumb penalties. We got to take care of the football. The only way we give that football up is if we kick it. And if we do those things, um, I like our chances. We'll be a hard team to beat, but it will have to play the game. And of course, your former quarterback, Tyson Bajan, just continued to do great things in the NFL. Got his first start on Sunday and, and led the Bears to a win. Well, what can you say about what Tyson's been doing? We're awful proud of everything that Tyson's done uh, over the last uh, five years, obviously. Uh, but just seeing him be at the biggest stage there is in football and excel the way he did uh, is a credit to him his family and this community that he's from and uh, really excited for him and very proud of him. And coach, now you're on all these interviews as well. So we appreciate you taking some time to talk to the little guys this yeah. week. This is home, man. You guys are my guys, you know, I, I mean, this, this is the number one, number one priority. Okay. All right, coach. Thank you. Good luck this week. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Concludes our coach interview brought to you by Parsons Ford located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road in Martinsburg or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first Parsons. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family. And we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood, West Virginia is closing its doors forever. I'm Lori, and my father started this jewelry store 48 years ago, it's bittersweet for us to retire and go out of business, but we are so, so grateful to you. I'm Dave. Stop by now and receive up to 70% off our entire inventory. It's our way of saying thank you to our cherished clients 
who have treated us like family for so many years. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute! As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. We welcome you back on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. W. Harley Miller Systems providing custom migration services like home and office automation, home theater, networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. Nick Verzley alongside me, Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, and back in the studios in Martinsburg, Kyle McLaughlin. As Travis, let's look a little bit about these uh, defenses. We'll start with Bloomsburg. It's a unit that's traditionally you know, pretty aggressive, gets after the quarterback pretty well, uh, Really, though, the, their stud is their inside linebacker. Like most of these PSAC schools, seems like a lot of teams have have those guys on the inside that are the leaders of the defense and, and really stand out when you look at the numbers. Yeah, and first name that really jumps off the sheet at you is Ryan D'Ambro, the six foot, two hundred eighteen pound junior linebacker, already getting off to a red hot start this year. Sixty eight tackles, thirty one of those solo. Also had five tackles for a loss two sacks, and three pass breakups. So he's letting you know right up front that he's going to be able to get after the quarterback and also be able to make plays and space. Another player that really stands out for this Bloomsburg defense is going to be Quentin Gaskell, the defensive back, six foot, 190 pounds, one of the few seniors on this ball club, and 2021 was named all PSAC East first team. And if you look at the numbers that he put up last year, you can certainly understand why. In 10 games of action, had 92 tackles, 68 of those solo, three tackles for loss, including two sacks, two forced fumbles, two INTs, 12 pass breakups, and also had one block kick. And that's something that you see popping up a lot on this roster for Bloomsburg is that they're really able to wreak havoc on special teams over the past two years. They've had five separate players that have blocked kicks, so that could be something that could loom large in today's game is that if they're able to create some chaos on special teams, those could be the type of big momentum plays that could give the Huskies a chance to score a big upset today. When you look at the Shepard defense, JT coming out leads the team in tackles, but I think the bigger st- story heading into this game is that Shepard has injuries at all three levels to some key players. Nathan Muley goes down last week. We didn't see Dwayne Grantham last week uh, active, and we didn't see him warming up. And, of course, the corners, both your starting corners before the season, Dante Harrison as well as Clayton Batten are out for some significant time here, and then, at safety, we saw Anilio Pena miss last week's game, had an MRI uh, this week, didn't see him warming up as well. So this is a beat-up Shepard defense. They may be able to get away with it today just because they have good depth in this program, and I think their depth might be a little bit better than the Bloomsburg starters. But moving forward, it, it's going to be tough, I think, for this team, especially if those guys can't get healthy here in the next few weeks because you still have some big games remaining on the roster during the regular season. And, of course, this Shepherd University football program, they have postseason aspirations. So if you expect to have a good showing in the postseason, you're certainly going to need your starters back out there on the field. But one bright spot that has emerged in in, in, in the wake of all these injuries has been Christian McDowell, the 5'11", 170-pound junior, has come in and played admirably last week. One tackle, had one interception, and also had one kick return for 25 yards. But if you look at the season overall, 27 tackles, 11 of those solo, three interceptions, and six pass breakups. So that's a pretty good state to be in is that when you're that diminished at one position on your defense, you have a player that can come in off the bench and give you those type of big plays on the field. And it just shows you what type of program that Shepard has is where they're able to go out and recruit this kind of talent and, more importantly, develop it so when they do have a chance to step out on the field, they're able to go out there and show out. You mentioned McDowell. We talked to him this week in our In the Huddle segment, as well as Shepard wide receiver 
Jeremiah Taylor. We will hear from them on the other side of this two-minute break. This is Shepherd Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. There's nothing quite like the Honda Accord Hybrid and the CRV Hybrid when it comes to exhilarating efficiency. With hybrid technology and thrilling capability, these vehicles deliver an electrifying performance on every drive. But what truly makes these hybrids special is the unwavering determination that inspires everything we do. Redefine your driving experience with Honda, KBB.com's best value brand of 2023. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA's moving lives forward. Based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. We now go in the huddle, brought to you by the Myriad Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue or give them a call at 304-263-4343. We now go in the huddle with Shepard Rams wide receiver, Jeremiah Taylor. Jeremiah, uh, you continue to have a good season for this team, going over 100 yards and scoring a touchdown last week. What did you take away from the win against uh, Westchester? Uh, I feel like we could play a complete game all four quarters. I mean, we only played, my majority of the starters only played the first three. and We handled business all three quarters. We prepared well in practice the whole week, so we knew we was going to come out there and do on Saturday. What kind of led you to coming to Shepherd? The program, honestly. I heard I, I heard it was a smaller school in West Virginia. I'm coming from a, far, a smaller school in Fairmont, and, you know, the culture here, winning culture. I didn't really come from a winning program in my last school, and I got the opportunity to coach right here on my phone. He was like, I would like to have you on board. Came up for a visit and joined him the same weekend. Shepard's had some other guys come in from Fairmont over the years. Did you talk to any of them, or were you familiar with any of those other guys? Uh, some of them. Uh, Ponce De Leon, you know, he, I worked out with him a couple of times at the crab. I think he played DB here way before I got here, but that's really it. Not too many. I wasn't talking to too many guys from here prior to this. When you look at the uh, wide receiver room, you've kind of established yourself as that number one wide receiver, but you guys have you know, a lot of depth and a lot of talent at that position, as usual here at Shepard. Uh, what do you say is the biggest strength of the wide receivers? We play fast. We all athletic. I feel like from top to bottom, we can all play all four positions at the receiving court, you know, inside, outside. You know, we, we all got pretty good speed, pretty good knowledge of the game. We locked in with Seth, you know, every week. We come in and practice, and we do what we got to do preparation-wise, and it's working for us so far. You mentioned Seth, your quarterback, and, um, you know, when I talked to him in the preseason, he mentioned you first when he was talking about wide receivers. How do you think you two have grown that chemistry over uh, this past year? He's helped me out a lot. You know, he's been playing at a, he played a higher level before he came here. I've been playing D2 ball my whole, since I've been in college. And his insight on the game from, that, from a faster pace level prior to coming here is really helping us out. It's helping me out a lot. You know, the reads, his insight on when to sit down the route, when to keep going, you know, just in the, the little nuances of the game of receiver and quarterback, you know, he, he helped me out a lot for sure. Bloomsburg this week, what have you seen from them so far defensively? I mean, they think they're going to come in. We, they, we, I feel like they're going to try to, you know, send some pressure at us, but our big guys up front, they can handle it. I feel like our receiving core, we're going to do what we do every weekend. We know we're going to get over top of them. If they think we can't, we still are. I mean, I feel like we can do what we want with them, honestly, with anybody. Now go in the huddle with Shepard Rams defensive back Christian McDowell. Christian, 
Uh, you got an interception last week in the win over Westchester. What did you take away from the game? Um, just a good defensive play uh, overall throughout the whole game. Um, as far as the interception, just seeing the ball, had to go get it. So. For you, you're a guy that's played a lot of different positions in the secondary this year. Uh, how do you think you've stepped up when guys have gone down with injuries and just filling different roles? Uh, as far as as far as going to corner, I felt pretty good, very confident. You know, uh, the rest of the defense, they kind of gave that confidence to me, encouraged me to be the best I can be uh, every day in practice and throughout the game. So I, I feel like it's shown, you know, we've had to step up a lot. But uh, I feel like I, I'm made for the challenge to stepping up. So, Did you have experience prior to this season playing corner? Yes, sir. I played corner at Alabama State my freshman year. So having that experience definitely helped. And, and uh just overall, you know, you look at this defense and you guys have had injuries at both corners uh, heading into the season. Anilio Pena has gone down now with an injury as well. So uh, you're really one of the few guys that have a lot of experience playing in this defense. How have you now tried to lead that secondary when you look at all the injuries that you guys have had? Just making sure that everybody compete every day, you know. Um, at DB, is one of the positions where if you get beat, everybody knows. So just making sure that everyone has the pride to compete with everyone that, that steps on that field and, and knowing that if a play comes, you got to make that play no matter what. And early in the season, you guys had some struggles in the secondary. Uh, you look back at the Cal game, you know, they had some big plays. Uh, but since then, it seems like the, the secondary has gotten better each and every week. How do you feel like, how do you evaluate how the team has grown defensively and, and just given up less big plays in the secondary? I think we just had to get more comfortable and more confident. Um, each week, like you said, we've gotten better. And I think that we'll continue to get better each week. But just more so confidence, knowing the plays, and just knowing that, like, at DB, is it's one of the positions where you got to be on top of your game every game. So with, uh, with Coach Klein really emphasizing that DB has got to step it up, I feel like we've, we've done the challenge. And with our Coach Wright teaching us better technique each week, we've just been, uh, we've been making every play that comes to us and not allowing deep balls. And you also are a kick returner on this team as well. And the special teams unit has been great uh, for Shepard all season long. Just uh, what's it been like, I guess, playing for Coach Wright in the, in the special teams and, and getting those kick returns and seeing what this special teams has made such a big impact for this team this year? I mean, Coach Wright, he's a magician when it comes to uh, comes to kick return. Well, any special team. So like he'll sit there late nights just coming up with different schemes and plans. and. Every time it's worked, as long as we've been able to run it 100%, it's worked. So just trusting that he'll put us in the best predicament each game, and it's shown. It's definitely shown. Bloomsbury this week, what have you seen from their offense so far? Um, I've seen, number one, very great solid receiver. Uh, they like to go to the boundary a lot, uh, a couple shot plays to the field. but. Nothing too crazy, just we got to uh, stay true to our keys. Includes our player interviews portion of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. When we return, we will have more. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10. The Honda Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot are in a league of their own when it comes to rugged capability. Their relentless power and versatility make these vehicles the ultimate challengers for exhilarating adventures and formidable terrain. But it's not just performance that makes these cars special. It's the unwavering determination that inspires everything we do. That's why we're KBB.com's best value brand of 2023. CMA's Honda of Winchester 3985 Valley Pike. CMA's moving lives forward. Available all-wheel drive on Pilot based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music. Or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. 
I'm gonna watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm gonna watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. We welcome you back to Bloomsburg here at Redmond Stadium on the campus of Bloomsburg University. Shepherd University Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith. And Travis, let's get into your keys to the game. Brought to you by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. Travis, go ahead and start with our visitor, Shepard, and move over to Bloomsburg after that. Well, looking at Shepard, the first order of business is that you cannot afford to overlook your opponent. So important for the Rams to get off to a quick start today to try to hate, take the Huskies out of the game. Like we've mentioned, the Huskies have struggled so far this season with a 1-7 and seven overall record, so no reason to give them a chance to get some confidence going in front of this pretty big home crowd. So if the Rams are able to go off to a good start, it's going to help them a long way in coming away with a victory. On offense for Shepard, you got to protect the ball. No silly turnovers. It's been raining on and off so far here during the pregame. Not sure how that weather is going to hold up throughout the course of the game. And the Rams, of course, have had their struggle playing in the elements this year. So they got to protect the ball on offense because Bloomsburg, that's the, really the only chance that they have to stay in today's game is if Shepard is out there playing sloppy football, putting the ball on the turf, and giving them turnovers. Also for Shepard, we talked about all of the injuries that they have mounting up on that defensive side of the ball. So good communication on the defensive side of the ball is going to be critical for Shepard because you have a lot of backups in the game, so they're going to have to talk and limit those big play opportunities so you can't just be out there on an island by yourself. If you're not sure what's going on, talk to somebody, get on the same page. You don't want to give up anything crazy because you're not sure what's going on because you're in a new spot. And most importantly for the Rams, have that big offensive line impose their will. That was something that they really did well last week in the running game. Also did a good job of protecting the quarterback, giving him extended time to go through his progressions. And this Rams offensive line was expecting it to be a strength of this ball club this year, and they have really lived up to that billing here as of late. So it's going to be important for that Rams offensive line to really impose their will in today's ball game. Our opening kickoff is brought to you by CMA Honda of Winchester, located at 3985 Valley Pike. CMA moving lives forward. So Bloomsburg won the toss, selected to defer to the second half. Shepard will get the football first, going back deep for the Rams. Is Christian McDowell as well as Malachi Brown, both standing inside, or McDowell standing inside the five and, and Brown standing inside the ten. We are underway here from Redmond Stadium. McDowell will field it at the three-yard line. McDowell. Some good blocking in front of him and then gets it out across the 25 to about the 27, and that's where Shepard will start with the football offensively. So this Rams offense, again, coming off of their best week of the season so far in terms of balance and points scored as well. 59 points put up a week ago. Not all of those offense, but uh, it, it was a good week. Exactly. It was, it was a total team effort. And Coach McCook talked about it at the end of the game. One of the first times that we see this season that the Rams able to put together four quarters of football in all three phases of the game, and you saw the result, and it was that bad to watch it in person as well. Malachi Brown running hard, gets some good blocks out there, gets it across the 30-yard line before he's brought down on the play. Bring up like a second down. Devin Fleming coming up on the tackle. Malachi Brown, again, just not lacking for physicality. The only thing that really gets him in trouble is when he's just trying to do too much with the ball in his hands. But you're seeing that maturation process. You're seeing him getting more and more comfortable in that running back role this year, and you're starting to see it result with more and more positive plays. It's about four on the play. It'll be second down and six for the Rams. Morgan throws to the near side complete and tackled right away on the play. Pass complete to Williams. And coming up and making the hit for Bloomsburg was Nate Capers, the 6-3 corner. So I'll bring up a third down for Shepard. As Williams, one of those guys that's going to be more and more part of this offense with the injuries at wide receiver. Cam Dorner going down. Williams, a Boston College transfer, had high expectations for him, and he's working his way in here late in the season. Third down for the Rams. Yeah, third down and about four. For Shepard from the 34-yard line, and they're in 34. And a heavier look for Shepard. Everybody's packed in tight. 
Morgan slings it to the near side, intercepted. Bluesburg picks it off, trying to force it into double coverage was the Rams, and it's picked off in the play by Nundir McLeod. McLeod, excuse me. And we talked about it right before the snap of the ball. Everybody was just kind of bunched in all together. And usually when you're doing something like that, it usually involves some type of crossing routes or something where you're going to try to create that space. But it really didn't develop that way. Everybody stayed packed in like that, and McLeod was just able to read the quarterback's eyes and pick them off. And, again, that was something that Shepard wanted to avoid in today's game was not give up the ball because that's really the only chance that Bloomsburg has a chance to pull out a win is if, the Shepherd Rams are sloppy with the ball on offense. So first and ten from the Shepherd side of the field here for Bloomsburg. Send a man in motion. And Reese will scroll up, roll out to the right and throw complete on that far sideline inside the 30-yard line. It was Owen Anderson with the reception. Anderson. Coming out of the slot to make that catch. He'll bring up a second and short for Bloomsburg. Moving the ball down to the 29-yard line. This will be second and two here for the Huskies. You see the Huskies coming out just wanting, getting their, just wanting to get their quarterback out of the pocket. The Rams' pass rush has really been coming on as of late, so you give your quarterback a little bit more time if you're able to get him on the move. They'll run Monaco here on second and two. He tries to bounce it up outside, does cut it up. Kevin Kowser, the first one there. And O'Neal cleans it up for the Rams. As it will be a first down, Bloomsbury, they move the chains. Good job by that... Uh, or by Monaco there. It looked like he wanted to get to the outside. That wasn't really there, and he cut it up and got the yards necessary to get that first down, Travis. And he's coming off of a productive game last week. Wasn't able to make it to the end zone, but he did have 11 carries for 49 yards. So he's been having a productive year so far this season, averaging 5.6 yards per carry. He's again looking to throw here on first down. He completes underneath to Monaco in the slot, and Monaco takes it down inside the 10-yard line. Miles Greer and JT Comey out combined for the tackle. There'll be another Huskies first down. And you see what the Huskies are trying to exploit. They know Dwayne Grantham isn't in the middle of that defense. And those other linebackers, they are good playing in space, but they're not as dangerous as Grantham is playing in space. So when the Huskies come out in five wide, you're going to get a linebacker matched up on Monaco, and that's a matchup that's going to be in favor of Bloomsburg all day long. Same formation for the Huskies. They're looking for the end zone and incomplete. Pass intended. For Jeffrey or Jerry Griffin Bachelor, excuse me, the intended wide receiver, and it'll bring up a second down and goal for Bloomsburg. Jerry Griffin Bachelor, affectionately known as Juice, on the Husky sideline, and has been the leader and receiver for the Huskies so far this year. 36 catches for 464 yards and a touchdown. Also a capable punt returner when called upon. Monaco in the backfield here on second down and goal. And they'll fake it to him, throw it over the middle and incomplete, but a flag comes in from the back judge. Pass intended for Nas Jones, Singleton and Hart in coverage. It looks like it's going to be pass interference against the Rams or a holding I, potentially. I, I, thought, I thought it was going to be that or possibly a hit on a defenseless receiver. A lot of times on those quick, tight RPO-type throws, is a chance for a big collision, but they're going to call pass interference, so the defender got there a little bit too quick for the referee's liking. But right now, this is going to be one of the keys for Bloomsburg coming into today's game. They have been pretty efficient in the red zone, scoring on 74% of their trips into the red zone, but it's going to be critical for them to come away with touchdowns. We've seen a couple times this year where teams have had success driving down the field on Shepard but having to settle for field goals, and it really comes back to haunt them. You think back to the Cal PA game or the Lockhaven game, those Shepard Rams are really able to shift, for, uh, shift momentum, holding to a teams to three. Bloomsburg goes to the big fullback, and he's in for six. Running it in with Sean Hunt for the touchdown. When we talk about big, we certainly mean it. 5'9", 260, the freshman able to pound the ball in down inside the goal line. Always makes me feel good deep down in my bones when I see a fullback taking it in three yards in a cloud of dust. I mean, Hunt, you know, definitely a tough guy to bring down, especially when you get in that situation. 
five nine, two sixty. You're trying to get lower than him, and he's already he's pretty low. Yeah, he's already pretty low, and he's, he's pretty already, physical as yeah, well. He's already down there. There's nothing but elbows, knees, and shoulder pads to tackle. None of that's fun to hit. Kevin Kerrigan's extra point is up and good, and Bloomsburg takes the seven nothing lead here at home against the Shepherd Rams. We'll take a thirty second break. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV ten and WRNR TV on YouTube. Man, is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. We welcome you back here to Redmond Stadium. Our score, Bloomsburg 7, Shepard nothing here with 11.22 to go in this first quarter. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, and back in the studios in Martinsburg, Colin McLaughlin. Christian McDowell back deep as well as Malachi Brown as Bloomsburg takes advantage of the interception, ends up driving it into the end zone, and Sean Hunt, the fullback, takes it in from two yards out. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fist of the conservative voice for the 16th District. McDowell will feel this one in the L of Bloomsburg and take the knee. So Shepard will have it on the touchback from the 25. Travis, you can get a chance to get your Bloomsburg keys in. Go ahead and, and go over some of those right now. Oh, we've already hit it. They've got to be able to force turnovers on defense to give their offense an extra possession. We've already seen that so far. We've also seen that the Bloomsburg Huskies have been effective in getting into the red zone and putting the ball in the end zone. Another thing that's going to be for Huskies, that's going to be important for the Huskies, is going to have to be a total team effort. I think they're going to have to try to get points out of all three phases of the game, like we mentioned early on in the pregame this is a group that over the past two years have had five different people block kicks so if they're able to create that kind of chaos on special teams tonight well today i should say it really is in favor of the huskies pulling off a big upset today malachi brown goes nowhere on that carry looked like in on that tackle was ryan deambra but i believe there's a 99 in there as well and we don't have a 99 on the roster so unless I'm missing something, I'm not certain who that was. 99, that will be Giovanni Cancro, the 6'2", 315-pound junior. Seven games this year, has 21 tackles, 12 of those solo, two pass breakups, and he has a blocked kick. Pass complete here on the near sideline to Jeremiah Taylor for the first Shepard first down of the day. So the Rams move the chains. And again, an unusual star for the Rams, Seth Morgan. That's only his fifth interception on the season. But credit to the Huskies, able to get that turnover and turn it into points. And now the Rams having to play from behind against. Now you have a crowd that's into the ball game. So now the road gets a little bit tougher for the Rams offense. First and 10 now from the 38-yard line. They'll run Brown. He's got a good hole. Shedding off tacklers, gets it across the 40-yard line before he's driven out of bounds on that far side. There is Quinton Gaskell to push him out. And Gaskell, again, one of the outstanding defenders for this Huskies ball club. Coming into today's ball game, 60 tackles, 36 of those solo, also has two interceptions and four pass breakups, and he, too, also has a blocked kick. Looked like it was going to be more on that run, but only a gain of about three. So second down and seven for the Rams. Because Devin Fleming came up running up hard. He was the first defender that had a shot at Malachi Brown, but Brown rarely goes down on that first uh, hit. Here's a screen pass underneath to Batten. Good blocks Batten on the outside. Good block from Barry Hill. He's still going up into Bloomsburg territory, brought down around the 40-yard line. It's a first down, Shepard. That was Kai Seaschultz in on the tackle. Yep, C. Schultz coming up and chasing down the speedy Batten. But a good block by Hill to seal that edge and, and then just kind of cause the Bloomsburg defender. Nobody really blocked him there on the outside, but it was, it was a tough lane. Yeah, and, and it was a good block because you're out there on the edge, you're exposed to the referee, so Hill just did a good job of shielding the defender, just creating enough of space for his 
teammate to get through. Morgan under pressure, throws off his back foot, pass intended for Jeremiah Taylor, an incomplete. The Getz came through on that one to cause the pressure. I'm sorry, Brady Thompson in on that play. Right now you see the Bloomsburg coaching staff trying to work the referees calling for an intentional grounding, but there was a wide receiver in the area. Taylor did a good job of coming back to help out his quarterback. Yeah. So not only once he realized the ball was going to be thrown away, he made a good play for it and helped the Rams avoid the penalty. I, I guess the argument that Bloomsburg would maybe be making is that Morgan could have been in the grass potentially as well. So you know they don't want to get a roughing the passer. <laughs> yeah. who, who knows? But – I don't think they're going to call that as it looked like Morgan did throw to an intended receiver. And, and most times they usually give the benefit of the doubt to the quarterback. Here's a screen pass for Barry Hill. Good tackle. Good tackle in space, but Jester with a good block on that outside. Coming up and making that tackle for Bloomsburg was Devin Fleming. So, again, Fleming coming up. You could tell he might have been a little bit a little bit peeved that he wasn't able to come and make that tackle on Brown, so he didn't want to miss his opportunity bringing down Hill on that last pass attempt and a third and long coming up for Shepard third down and seven here with just over eight minutes to go in this first quarter seven nothing Bloomsburg Morgan throws to the sideline complete to Batten who steps out of bounds right at the first down marker again Fleming there and they're going to mark him about a half yard short it looks like so it'll be fourth down. Shepard will definitely go for this. That was a that was a tough spot right there, but I wasn't sure maybe his foot would have stepped out right before he got to the sticks. And Bloomsburg, their secondary did a good job of, of closing on the football. That's something that's going to be critical for Bloomsburg today. You want to limit the run after catch. That's something that the Rams have certainly tapped into here over the past couple of weeks, realizing that they have some explosive athletes on the outside. Just get the ball in their hands, get the ball to them in space, and let them make something happen. Fourth down and inches for the Rams. They'll run Malachi Brown. He stopped in the backfield. Again, it's Tom coming up and making the play. I'm sorry, that time Tom gets in on that one. He gets one of the leading tacklers for this Bloomsburg defense. And just Fisher was late getting over. The Rams like using that zone look where the linemen are stepping play side, and then you have that wing or tight end that usually scoops out the backside defender. And that time, Fisher was just late getting to the point of attack, and that time, Getz, you really don't want to give a player of that caliber any type of advantage because Getz was able to get into the backfield and lower the boom on Malachi Brown. What a start this is for the Bloomsburg Huskies if they are going to pull off this upset. They have a great opportunity to really establish something here. First down and 10 from the 35-yard line. A little bit of trickery from the Huskies. Reese trying to escape the pocket, and he is brought down in the backfield, sacked for a loss. Kevin Kowser off the edge, getting just enough of Reese to trip him up. And now that that sets you back. So, you know, I, I like the idea there, Bloomsburg being aggressive, but that play kind of took a long time to develop, and now you put yourself way behind the chain. you got to have something underneath because the Rams have shown that they have tremendous speed from sideline to sideline. So good play action fake in the backfield, but give your quarterback a check down option so if he does get outside the pocket, he has somebody to dump it off to because Reese isn't that type of runner where he's going to be able to get to the edge. Second and 16, it's a huge hole for Caleb Monaco. He gets all the way out to the first down marker up to the 45-yard line, and he will move the chains for a first down. So after it looked like Bloomsburg was going to be in a very tough situation on second and 16, Monaco gets a huge hole, and he carves them up. That's such a huge asset to your offense when you have a running back that can make up when you're behind the chains like that that can make people miss and get big yards. Another big hole for Monaco, and he's got another first down. Dragging defenders of Shepard. Mike Forbes making the tackle as well as Christian McDowell. But early on, it's been all Bloomsburg here on the road. Shepard coming in at 7 and 1. This is 1 and 7 Bloomsburg. As we mentioned in the pregame, this team has battled the entire season, even against some of the top teams in the PSAC. And they have come out today with an excellent start. Reese looking to throw it here on first down and 10. Now they'll run QB draw up the middle, and Kevin Kowser's there again to lay the stick. Coming up also, Miles 
Greer in on that tackle. And again, a solid gain on first down. You don't want to handcuff yourself by going for a big play on first down and setting yourself up for a second and long because that really plays into the advantage of the defense because now they know you're kind of put in a position where you have to where you have to get yards on second down and you have to be consecutive on second down or you have to be conservative on second down because you really don't want to be facing a third and long. Second down and seven for the Huskies. Reese. Under pressure, throws on the flat and incomplete. And again, these slow developing plays, it doesn't take much for those Rams defenders to get home. So I understand the look that you're trying to get for the Huskies. You have an aggressive defense, so you want to try to throw them off guard with some play action or some misdirection, but sometimes you got to make that calculation, is the juice worth the squeeze? And so far, when the Huskies have tried to use those slow developing plays, it's kind of blown up in their face. Looks like Mike Forbes provide the, provided the pressure for the Shepard defense. He'll bring up a third down and seven for the Huskies in Shepard territory to the 39-yard line. Resending Nas Jones in motion, and will take the snap, roll to the near side, throw high and completes Anderson, knocked out of bounds for a first down by Christian McDowell. Good job again, Huskies Reese. I mean, he gets out in motion, and, and it seems like when they're trying to get him throwing on the run, he, he throws the ball pretty well. And it's and it's a it's a user friendly offense for the quarterback when you're rolling him out, and you have that type of pass catcher in Anderson who does a good job of finding those soft spots in the zone, settling down, showing the quarterback his numbers, and giving him a big target. And Reese again, very comfortable getting outside the pocket, making those throws on the run. First and ten from the thirty one. Here's Monaco following his big offensive lineman, only going to get about two. Richie Aguilar in there as well as a bunch of Rams. Robertson might have been the first one there as well as O'Neal in on that tackle. And Bloomsburg showing some athleticism up front on the offensive line. That was center Marlon Westcott, the 6'2", 315-pound junior, pulling around that right side of the offensive line. Not too often you see a center pulling. So it is a compliment to his abilities when you see that incorporated into an offense and able to pick up a couple tough yards on first down. Second eight, Reese over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Nas Jones, Miles Greer in coverage. Those passes over the middle, definitely dangerous against the Shepard defense, Travis. And you see that window is already extremely tight early on. This Rams defense good at making adjustments. They're a good football IQ group out there on the field. So I understand you want to get the ball out of your quarterback's hands quickly, and you give them those RPO play-action style passes to do so. But, again, you risk it when you go over the middle like that because all it takes is one tip, and then the offense is leaving the field, and the opposing offense is coming on the field. 3.41 3.41 to go in this first quarter. Bloomsburg driving again into Shepard territory. Here's Monaco out in the flat. He's tackled short of the first down by Harold O'Neill. They'll bring up a fourth down, and most likely Bloomsburg will go for a year. Probably too far for a field goal. So fourth and, and manageable. Should be about a fourth and four from the 25. Three receivers go to the far side. The sun coming out here at Bloomsburg. And Free play. Forbes should have been in the – they're going for Anderson. Knocked away by Christian McDowell. But that the should still be a first in. down. Like Forbes lining up in the neutral zone or an encroachment as uh, the hard count got him to jump. And that's that really hurts if you're Shepard. I mean, obviously they had the free play. I, I don't know if they knew that right away, but – that's good recognition by Reese, still taking that shot to the end zone. They're going to call it on Baxter. I thought it was it was Forbes there on the edge, but possibly both of them lined up wrong after that hard count. So the Huskies again moving it, Travis, into Shepard territory, down to the 20-yard line, and now in the red zone for the second time today, first and 10. Yeah, Bloomsburg going to that five-wide receiver look. Monaco comes back into the backfield now to the right of Reese. Jones, the tight end, lines up in each back spot. And they will run it with Monaco, and he's going to be losing yards on this carry. Omari, I'm sorry, Gianni Gamble coming up and making that tackle for Shepard. It's going to be a loss of one. 
Bring up a second and you already see Bloomsburg starting to show some different wrinkles. They've shown that five wide receiver look. That time they showed it at the beginning of the play. Then they shifted into another formation. We remember going back to the Edinburgh game. That's something that that offensive coordinator was especially skilled at doing, was using a lot of formations, a lot of shifts to try to keep that defense off balance. About 235 to go in this first quarter. And here's a run up the middle after the two-yard loss. They get positive yardage on that carry. That was Ty Pringle coming in, the sophomore. Coming into today's game, having 51 carries on the season for 156 yards and a touchdown. Also three catches out of the backfield for 27 yards. A little bit surprised as we see Pringle here. They haven't seen any Jordan Barnett and we're almost at the end of the first quarter. Not certain. Could be dealing with an injury, but it's third down here for Shepard. Third down and eight with under two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Reese throws to the near side. Caught by Nas Jones inside the 10-yard line. Gamble was very close to getting an interception. Instead, Jones hauls it in, gets the first down. He's brought down by JT Komayow, the big tight end. He's a tough matchup at 6'3", 230. They can use him in a lot of different ways. And, and, and it's a shame that, that, he's up, that, he, that he doesn't get more accolades. He is one of the better tight ends that you're going to see in the PSAC. Last week, had a big game against East Stroudsburg, six catches for 56 yards. Reese under some pressure, ends up getting positive yardage, brought down by Jack Baxter on the play. Looked like Queen was in there as well off the edge. And he'll bring up a second down and goal. But what an opportunity here for the Bloomsburg Huskies. One in seven playing at home against the Shepherd team that's been rolling. Just stopped Westchester last week, 59-21. And you feel like it, I mean, all Bloomsburg's playing is for spoiler at this point. A loss today, and, and who knows what would happen to Shepard in terms of their playoff chances. East Strasburg's on the horizon. We knew this could be a trap game, and so far it's living up to that hype. Reese on the QB keeper. Goes up the middle, not a whole lot of room up the middle against the Shepard defense. That's been consistent today. Yeah, no push up front. We talked about some of the injuries. But the Rams, again, showing their depth, showing their versatility. There was absolutely no push up front. And it's kind of strange to say that the home team, they're already up by seven with a chance to extend that lead. But this is an important possession for Bloomsburg. Like, they have to try to – they have to have some type of sense of desperation, a sense of urgency with this opportunity because you can't settle for a field goal and give that – chance give that shepherd team a chance to kind of breathe the sigh release and get a little bit more comfortable they got to keep the pressure on they got to get into the end zone third and goal from the eight reese throws tipped and intercepted by the rams jt coming out coming up with the interception and shepherd gets a goal line stand looked like reese was thro- forcing it triple coverage now two flags come in here on the after the play but just a ball you can't throw there Travis didn't really look like anything was open don't know if maybe he saw something with his initial read and just fired it it was he locked onto his primary wide receiver because there really wasn't that many options over on that side of the field the rest of the formation was over to the wide side of the field and he just tried to squeeze it into a window that wasn't there So Shepard will have it backed up inside their own five on the penalty, uh, or probably inside the ten. But either way, that's the end of the first quarter. Shepard gets a stop. We'll take a one-minute break, and then when we come back, we'll have the second quarter. This is Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa Treasurer. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. 
Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia Proud. Jordan Barnett is rumbling down the sideline and out of bounds at about midfield. Our first quarter was brought to you by the Skinner Law Firm, Accident and Injury Lawyers, representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com as well as Smallwood and Small Insurance, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive in Martinsburg. Call 304-263-3361. Big run for Jordan Barnett getting the Rams out toward midfield, and Barnett will stay in the backfield and they'll feed the big man again. Not as much room on this run. Gets it out to about midfield before he's stacked up by the Huskies, but I mean that's what we've been waiting for. Where was Barnett in that first quarter? Uh, not that Brown was running bad or anything like that, but usually we see him getting in and getting in the rotation. But here in the second quarter, they go to him, Travis, and he gives you a big spark. And you just see that his usage has increased as the season's gone along, and that just shows that he's getting more and more used to the offense. The coaches are getting more and more comfortable with him out there doing a variety of things, and you're seeing that with success on the field for Barnett. Here's Barnett here, and not much room again. Good job by this Bloomberg front to, to cause some issues for Shepard here. Again, just a pile of bodies there in the middle. Look like big defensive lineman John Aston for Bloomsburg was there in the middle of the ruckus. That'll bring up a third and five from the Bloomsburg 48. So we got third down for the Rams. Third and about five from the 48 of Bloomsburg. 13-20 to go in this second quarter. Malachi Brown is back in the backfield. Rams having some issues with the play. Four on the play clock as Morgan takes the snap, spins away and throws to the, over the middle, completes to Barry Hill, and Hill has it for a first down. Shepard brought down about the 30-yard line. It's Getson on the tackle. Good chemistry that time between Morgan and Hill. Didn't look like that's the way the play was designed. The Hill doing a good job, settling down, finding that soft spot of the zone. And Morgan shows once he gets outside the pocket, not so much of a running threat, but he is mobile enough to extend plays. And then once he gets off platform and off schedule, very skilled and efficient at finding that check down. That time Hill able to pick up a big first down conversion. Fake it to Malachi Brown, throw it in the flat to Barry Hill, and Bloomsburg all over that one. Looks like that might be a block in the back on Shepard. Looked like Dustin Fisher was a little bit late to the party, just trying to do whatever he can to spring his wide receiver, but maybe been a little bit overzealous in trying to get that block for his teammate. Brian Wart's coming up and making that tackle, the sophomore. Yep. Fisher, you see that? that, that, that. Formation there for Shepard. They... I mean, it's pretty obvious it's going to be a screen to Hill with the two tight ends out there and as well as Hill on this near side. And uh, Westchester, you know, or sorry, Bloomsburg just reading it perfectly and making the play. Wart's coming up and making the tackle there, and now it's a first down and long for the Rams. And, and that's the second time today that Fisher has been uh, late to the party. Early on, Getz was able to get up in the middle for the big fourth down stop when Fisher was late on that backside kickout block. That time Fisher was late to get over there to – Block for his wide receiver on the screen and got the penalty for a block in the back. So the Rams starting first down in a hole. First down and 20 from the 41-yard line of Bloomsburg. Rams with the three receivers set. It's Hill and Batten to the far side. I believe that's Taylor here to the near, and I think Chandler Brown moved early. So the Rams continue to go backwards here. In this second quarter, false start will make it a first and 25. And it may have been a combination of things that induced Brown to kind of jump and get that false start because you saw those corners simultaneously for Bloomsburg dropped off, looked like they were bailing out in the coverage, and it may have been some type of an adjustment call by Seth Morgan. Brown was expecting the ball to be snapped, got out of his stance a little bit early, and got the penalty. First down and 25 now for the Rams. Same formation for Shepard. It's Hill and Batten to the far side, Taylor in the near. Morgan dumps it down on a screen for Malachi Brown, and Brown maybe gets a yard or two on the play before he's brought down at the 44. So not much on 
on that play. It'll bring up a second and 23. Brown looked like he was kind of caught out of sorts again on that play. Looked like he may have missed his assignment. He should have gone out wider, being that play side tackle. Needed to get out there and try to take care of the defender towards the sidelines. Instead, stays inside closer to the hash and allowing that defender to come up and make a good tackle in space on Brown. Second and 23 from the 44. Morgan stepping up. Looking downfield, throws to Taylor underneath. Taylor tries to make a move and gets his all over it at about the 36-yard line. Good tackling in space has been a key for this Bloomsburg team early on, Travis. This will be third and long. And that was going to be something that was critical coming into today's game is that you wanted to limit those opportunities for run after catch. And that time it was good offense by Shepard that Morgan was able to scramble around again, extend the play, find the open wide receiver, but then Bloomsburg quickly reacts, swarms to the ball carrier, and tackles in space, and now the Rams facing a third and 15, and the Huskies have shown they've been able to get after the quarterback a little bit here early on, so curious to see if they're going to dial up some pressure or elect to stay in coverage. Right now it looks like they're going to play the coverage game. About 10.30 to go in this second quarter. Morgan slinging it out to the near side of Cordell Batten underneath. And again, good tackle. Ooh, tackles good tackle in space. space coming up and making that play for the Huskies. And that was an awkward tackle, and it looked like we got a Shepard. Turner. It looks like the Rams wide receiver still down. That was an awkward tackle. And again, wasn't anything dirty on that play. When you come up and you're that corner out there on the island by yourself and you've got to try to tackle a guy, you need to hold on to anything that you can get and wait for the cavalry to get there. And that's what the defender did. He just grabbed Batten's leg and did not let go, and Batten almost – Went into a split on the way down and just went down in a very awkward fashion. Yeah, it, it was a weird play because, like you said, you know, he held on to that leg and was waiting for the help. And initially you think, well, you hope you, there's no hit up top. It looks like that, that ankle or lower leg is being looked at right now. Let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Ranch Football on TV 10. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. We welcome you back here to Bloomsburg. Rams are going to be forced to punt here on a fourth and long for the Rams. Fourth and about 15 with 10, 12 to go in this second quarter, and the Rams will punt away. Batten helped off the field. Our second quarter is brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. That will be a touchback. As good. well as Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience, go to HagerstownFord.com. That was a good punt. Looked like the Rams had a chance to make a play on it, but good discipline play on special teams for Bloomsburg. Was able to help the Huskies get that touch back on that play and setting their offense up with pretty good field position. Yeah, it could have been, you know, way backed up inside the 10. Shepard's defense has been known to get some safeties this year, so it could have been really a tough situation for this Bloomsburg team, but now they at least have some breathing room at the 20, and overall, I mean, it's been an excellent start. They're up 7 nothing. Shepard hasn't really done too much offensively. Reese has looked good, but that interception costing them some points on that last drive. Monaco is the back, and he'll get the carry and has a hole again. Monaco following his blockers. Getting out to about the 28-yard line. Jack Baxter bringing him down from behind. And bring up second down. And speaking of Jacks, Monaco was running behind his big fullback, Jack Ferguson, the six foot, 225-pound junior, was leading the way. So it'll be about second and one on the play after the nine-yard pickup. Reese with Monaco the back again, and they'll give it to him. And he, I believe, has the first down before being tackled by Harold O'Neill. Looks like that was a, quite a generous spot that time, but it's going to be enough to move the chains for the Huskies. And again, right now, the Huskies making the most of their opportunities, missed out on getting some points their last time down in the red zone. And 
That's a tough opportunity not to be able to capitalize on, but so far, Bloomsburg has shown that they've been able to hang with Shepard so far. So first and 10 here from the 31-yard line. There's Pringle, and Pringle getting out to about the 40-yard line on that carry. So now Bloomsburg starting to establish that run. They came out early, pretty aggressive attack. Kumayao in on that tackle as well as O'Neal. But now we're seeing that run game of Bloomsburg that has been kind of their strength of the offense throughout the season. And that's something that's really going to play to their advantage because, one, they want to keep that Shepard offense on the sidelines. They want to eat up clock. They want to shorten the game. They've got the advantage so far. So right now their number one mission, of course, they want to run the ball effectively, wear that defense down, but they also want to eat up some clock. About eight minutes to go in this second quarter. Here's Pringle again, another first down, another big run. Naeem Alexander makes the tackle at the 45-yard line. Be a first down and 10 for Bloomsburg. So, again, the Huskies moving the football, and they're going to go quickly and run Pringle again. And another big run out to about the 49. Komayao makes the tackle as well as Baxter. There you go. There's no reason to overthink it. You just ran the ball effectively, got a big chunk on that play. So what do you do? You get up to the line, you run it again quickly. Chances are unlikely that that defense is going to be able to recognize that and make that adjustment in consecutive play. So you go up there, you take advantage. If you get a big chunk on that first run, chances are you're probably going to get a pretty good run on that second attempt if you're able to go up there and execute. And that's what the Huskies were able to do on first down, setting themselves up in a very favorable Second down position. Second and six. Reese looking deep down the middle of the field and nearly intercepted. Naeem Alexander was running it down. The intended receiver there was Griffin Batchelor. And it just looked like there was a miscommunication between the quarterback and the wide receiver because Reese looked like he was expecting him to work a little bit more vertical on that play whereas Griffin Batchelor worked more towards the middle of the field. So we realized we talked about how these quarterbacks have been rotating in and out, and sometimes that's where you're going to see some of that unfamiliarity show its face is when they're not going to have that type of chemistry of when you're playing deep and depending on how that safety or corner is playing you, where are you expecting to put the football and where are you expecting your wide receiver to run? So you're going to see that team have those type of miscues as they continue to try to figure out who's going to be the man for them at quarterback. Bloomsburg takes a timeout. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. As we welcome you back here to Redmond Stadium. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, Colin McLaughlin back in Martinsburg in the studio. About 7.13 to go in this first half up on the Jari Evans scoreboard. Jari Evans, former offensive lineman for the New Orleans Saints back in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Made a couple trips to the Pro Bowl. Yep, proud Bloomsburg alum, and that one tipped by Alexander and incomplete. We'll bring up fourth down, so kind of an interesting way to end this drive for Bloom. You run the ball well, run the ball well. You take a deep shot on a second and and medium, and it doesn't work out for you. Then you have to throw on third down and, and medium, and you don't get it, so. You're having success on the run, in the run game, so. If it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Yeah, I mean, you want to take those deep shots, typically, though, on, on those second and shorts, so then you still have, you know, third and two, third and three, but they took it on, like, a second and six and it didn't really work out for them. Here's the punt. It's a high kick. Miles Greer will throw up the fair catch and haul it in at the 10-yard line. A little bit of an issue for the Rams last week at home. 
against Westchester was hauling in punts, but a lot of that had to do with that wind, I believe, you know, 10, 20 mile per hour winds throughout the entire game. And, and it was weird because at certain parts on the field there was no wind, and then sometimes they were kicking from the no wind side into the windy side, so then the football starts dancing around kind of like a knuckleball. So it was difficult for anybody to try to field those punts, and we know that Greer is just chomping at the bit to try to make a play, and sometimes him just being so aggressive kind of led to him making some mistakes as far as putting the ball on the turf. But we've seen it throughout this year. That has been one of the bright spots consistently for this Rams ball club is their quality play on special teams. First and ten from the ten. Rams running Barnett that time. No room. Might have got a yard, but again, Bloomsburg doing a good job against the run so far. Gets in on that tackle. This uh, this Bloomsburg defense. They're, they're stout at the point of attack. We mentioned the big defensive lineman, Cankro, 6'2", 315 pounds. We also have Kai Seascholtz anchoring on the outside. They have him listed as a linebacker, but he primarily plays with his hand in the dirt at 6'3", 245 pounds. So they've got some beef up front that can cause some traffic jams. Throw this one underneath. Another screen pass for the Rams. That's kind of been the offense so far. A lot of runs and a lot of screens. That one hauled in by Gabe Bigby. And I'm curious what the, the Rams offensive coaching staff has seen because they're taking a conservative approach. And that time you throw that quick screen, you've got one blocker out there for three defenders. So even if that wide receiver does an excellent job of blocking, you still have two free defenders flying for a chance to make the tackle. And that time they were able to do that. Under six minutes to go, third down and two for Shepard. Seth Morgan in the shotgun, 7 nothing Bloomsburg. And a timeout coming for him from the Rams. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in 30. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. We welcome you back here to Bloomsburg, Redmond Stadium. Shepard trailing. The 1-7, Bloomsburg Huskies, 7-0 here in this second quarter. Rams coming in at 7-1. Just got a big win against Westchester, 59-21. But with 5.40 to go in this first half, they trail on the scoreboard, 7-0. It's a third and two from their own 18. Just a herky-jerky start so far for the Rams offense, really having a hard time settling into a rhythm. They had the big run by Barnett, but other than that, Nothing really sustained on the offensive side of the ball. Morgan looking to throw. Nothing was open downfield, so he dumps it down underneath to Ethan Williams, and Williams has the first down before he's knocked out of bounds. Ryan D'Ambra making the tackle. But it's a first down for Shepard, and that was a really important first down, Travis. If you flip the field again, Bloomsburg is going to get good field position before halftime. They do get the ball to start the second half as well, so just uh, important to at least move the drop ball on this drive and – Obviously, you're trying to get six, but. And again, that clock is ticking. I mean, time really isn't a factor yet, but you can see Bloomsburg, they're perfectly content with limiting the possessions in today's game with a seven-point lead. Morgan looking to throw. Throws underneath to Barnett, and Barnett has it. He's knocked out of bounds by Getz at the 30-yard line. Tom Getz, the inside linebacker. Making a lot of plays here today. It'll be second down. Don't see Barnett catch a ton of passes, but. He certainly is able to do so at times. A two-yard gain will be second and eight. The Rams staying conservative. You figure coming off of a game last week, at least come out with a heat check early on to see if you can still keep that momentum rolling, but quite the opposite for Shepard. Very conservative start so far. Big B in the slot. Hill and Taylor are the wide receivers. 
as they will run Barnett. Barnett with a good hesitation move, and oh, he is so run. hard to bring down. Jordan Barnett ends up picking up a first down. And they still on what didn't. Looks like. <laughs> they still couldn't bring him down. Even out of bounds, they couldn't bring him down. It looked like it was going to be a three, four yard run, and then Barnett just kept going. Arm tackles will not tackle. Big number zero, Jordan Barnett. Six foot, 225 pounds, and he used every ounce of it on that play. Just very difficult to bring down with that first defender. So first and ten for the Rams as they continue to move the ball here. Just over four minutes to go in this first half. Again, 7 nothing Bloomsburg. Morgan dumping it down to Barnett. Barnett using his physicality gets it up to about midfield, tackled on the play by the Huskies. Nair Ford Cherry. It, what you really see right now with this Bloomsburg defense, they've kind of taken a page out of what Cutstown usually does when they play against Shepard. They're really content as far as just playing off, keeping everything in front of them, and then they rally and tackle well in space. And so far, Bloomsburg has had a lot of success doing that today, forcing Shepard to be much more conservative and take those check downs. Here's Malachi Brown out of the backfield. Gets does just enough to get him out of bounds short. Of the first down marker, it appears, on a second and six play. It'll be third and about one after the five-yard pickup. That time gets to just enough, Travis, to keep that from being a first down. It'll be third and one here for the Rams. Again, a little surprised here. Brown is the back on third and short. We've seen a lot of Barnett early on this drive, so he's getting a break. Pistol formation. Morgan. Sending Williams in motion. They'll go Brown. This time he has a hole and has the first down. Into Bloomsburg territory goes Malachi Brown. Thompson making the tackle. It's a first down, Shepard. Malachi Brown again just showing that patience that he's been able to develop this year at that running back spot and running behind big left guard Wyatt Pelicano just did an awesome job on that play of washing down the defense. That's one of the things that this Rams offense has done very well over many years is employing the zone blocking scheme, and Wyatt Pelicano just put on a clinic on that last play, washing down the defense and creating a lane on the backside for Brown. Morgan throws high and incomplete, intended for Barry Hill. Good coverage on that play from the defense of Look, Nate Capers was in on that. Caper is one of your bigger defensive backs that you're going to come across. 6'3", 205 pounds, coming off of a big game last week versus East Stroudsburg where he had five tackles for those solo. So the big fella can come up and make plays in space against a quality slot like that with Hill. You figure a lot of times you get Hill matched up on a safety of that size, it's going to be a huge speed advantage in favor of Hill. But Capers showing that he has... Shepard's going to have to burn a timeout unless they reset this play clock, which they should because they never actually spotted the football, it appears. So play clock will reset now as the Rams have it here. Second down and 10 from the 42-yard line. Morgan again in the pistol. Brown the back. They'll throw it underneath to Malachi. Brown turning it upfield. Gets about a yard or two before he's thrown down. At about the 42-yard line. Like Kai Seasoltz was in on that tackle with a host of Husky defenders. Very similar to, again, a lot of the defenses. I mean, we talk about Shepard's defense all the time and how they all go to the football. We're seeing that from Bloomsburg a lot here today. Third down for the Rams, about eight, 41-yard line. And Morgan... Trying to pick up this first down for Shepard as they've burned a lot of time but haven't really gone too far down the field. Morgan under some heat, steps up, looks downfield, throws. Caught by Jeremiah Taylor short of the first down marker at the 35-yard line. So Shepard will have it here fourth and short. And with the time remaining on the clock here, about 115 and counting, fourth down and two for the Rams. They're going to go for it. They still have two timeouts remaining. Huskies making some changes here for this fourth down and two. That was Devin Fleming over there in the coverage. He just bailed out, and Taylor recognizing that, stopped short to try to get the completion, but just stopped short of the sticks on that play. 
I think the pass was a little bit underthrown from Morgan. Williams going in motion from right to left. Morgan throws to the near side complete to Ethan Williams, and he has room and blocking from Jeremiah Taylor, and he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard, Ethan Williams on a fourth down and two. The Rams complete it underneath. Bloomsburg was sagging off. Taylor with some excellent blocking down the field, and the Rams are on the board for the first time today on the touchdown pass with just 38 seconds to go here before halftime. Our score, Bloomsburg 7, Shepard 6. James Bozick on to attempt the point after. And again, it's been Bloomsburg has had opportunities to really to try to put themselves in, in really good position in this game, and they've missed out on those opportunities. Bozick's extra point is up and good. We are tied at seven. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Ranch Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. We welcome you back here to Bloomsburg. Our score, Shepard 7, Bloomsburg 7 after... Ethan Williams scoring on the touchdown reception. A great play design. Bloomsburg was playing back. And the credit also, I think you got to shout out Jeremiah Taylor on that drive, making a tough catch to give it to a fourth and manageable on fourth down and two. And then also with his blocking downfield, uh, Shepard able to get the catch and run for the touchdown. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th district. Shepard seven, Bloomsburg seven, they'll return this kickoff from about the six yard line. And Monaco still going. Monaco is dangerous, he gets it across the 20. Robertson comes up and makes the tackle, a flag comes in, should be holding against Bloomsburg. I believe the guilty party is gonna be Jake Romano, the fullback. And you would presume here, Travis, with uh, what, 30 seconds here in this first half. Bloomsburg gets the ball, start of the second half. Probably won't see anything too aggressive here being backed up uh, around your 10-yard line. Especially get the penalty is going to back you up a little bit, but you have run the ball successfully, so really not too much risk in putting the ball in the hands of Caleb Monaco, see what he can do. Maybe you can break something, and maybe that give you an opportunity maybe for a throw and catch and a possible field goal attempt. But that time, Caleb Monaco... Got his fullback in trouble a little bit on that play. You could see he kind of had his block set up where he was leveraged more to the inside, and as Monaco bounced it outside, again, he doesn't know where that ball carrier is going with it. He's been trained to look downfield and make that block, so he had his block set up, sealed off really good. Monaco bounced it outside, and once the defender changes his direction, that's an easy catch. I mean, that's an easy call for the referees to make. They're just going to take a knee from their own 11-yard line and head into the half, tied at seven between Shepard and Bloomsburg. The Rams are 7-1. and one. It's 1-7 one and seven Bloomsburg, but we got a good one here so far. Shepard, though, burning their timeout, so don't <laughs> – it's not uh, – we're not heading to halftime quite yet. Well, Shepard trying to make them make a decision. Shepard has been able to make some plays here as of late in the first half, and that's something we, you know, we talked about, the talent and the playmakers that Shepard has, but something that often gets overlooked, Shepard is a team that has a lot of grit, and they've shown that they've been able to battle through some adversity, and they just have another opportunity to do that today against a team that's really determined to get this win in front of their home crowd. Another kneel down. The Rams will burn that final timeout now. But they're probably not getting the ball back unless you fumble a snap here on a third kneel down. But, hey. You put the ball in play, you never know what happens. Yeah, I mean, the old joke of, uh, you know, you pay for those timeouts. <laughs> Might as well use them. <laughs> if Shepard still had their timeouts, obviously uh, Bloomsburg would have tried to get the first down. But they know the Rams only had two. They could only stop this clock twice. So A little, little gamesmanship Yeah, I mean, to close out the first half. It's, hey, it's worked in some ways for the Rams in the past, their ability to, to manage the clock. We go back to the, the Millersville game, which was 3 nothing. Shepard uh, thought that they were 
kind of, I guess, uh, shortchanged with yeah, the time. Yeah, I was trying to think of a good word to <laughs> phrase it. <laughs> For a family show, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and they, they were able to get the ball back, force a running into the uh, return man or – Fair catch interference and got a field goal before halftime to make it 3-3. This game feels very similar, right? We're tied at 7. That game ended up being 33-17 Shepard. We'll see if that similar thing plays out here in this second half. But we're tied at 7. We're headed to halftime. We'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll have the Mansion Freddie Law Firm halftime show. This is Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in two minutes. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. Welcome you back to Bloomsburg. Our score here at the half, Shepherd 7, Bloomsburg 7. As the Huskies marching band takes the field, our halftime show is brought to you by the Mansion Freddie Law Firm in Martinsburg, where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com. Travis, what were your thoughts on that first half? Bloomsburg did what they needed to do to try to come away with a win today. One, they were able to force that turnover early on in the game, and not only that, they were able to capitalize on that turnover with a touchdown. They had another trip down into the red zone where they didn't come away with any points, and I think that's going to be a huge missed opportunity for Bloomsburg. But so far, they've shown that they can hang with Shepard, especially if Shepard is not playing on all cylinders. And you see Shepard coming out a bit lethargic on offense, a bit herky-jerky on offense, really no type of established rhythm. They've had a couple big plays here and there. Fortunately for the Rams, one of those big plays resulted in a touchdown, but just an uncharacteristic first half for that Rams offense and Bloomsburg. Again, they have been pretty stout, offense, defense, and special teams. And we knew coming in, that Bloomsburg was going to have to play a complete ball game, have a chance to score a big upset against the Rams, and right now they're checking all the boxes to do just that. And the Rams going in, they've shown throughout this year they're very good at making halftime adjustments. That's a very good Shepherd Rams coaching staff. They've got a lot of experience, so I'm sure they're going to go in one. I don't know if they're going to give their guys a tongue lashing, but kind of a reality check of saying, guys, this is – college football if you don't go out there with your minds focused and ready to play we can lose to anybody in this conference so i'm sure they're going to drive that point home and i think you're going to see a much more motivated shepherd rams team coming out to take the field in the second half i think you hit on it there travis but i would say they checked every box except for one you can't turn the ball over in the red zone against this shepherd rams team a turnover is one thing but a turnover in the red zone leaving points off the board i think will potentially come back and hurt Bloomsburg today especially with just how you're heading into the half we're tied at seven so essentially it's just brand new ball game here in the second half if you go into the half at the lead all of a sudden you put a little bit of doubt into the shepherd mind and, and Bloomsburg believing 
maybe that belief is still there, but you, you feel a lot better about being up at halftime and with the ball to start the second half. But let's go ahead and take a look at these first half stats brought to you by the Larry, DeMar- Larry DeMarco Modern Realty Results. If you're looking for a home in the tri-state, they have you covered. We'll start the ramps. Jordan Barnett gave them a spark. Five carries, 60 yards, but 42 of them on one play. Malachi Brown, five carries for a net of 11 yards. So overall, besides that 42-yard run, this uh, Bloomsburg defense doing a good job of slowing down Shepard's rushing attack that went for over 200 yards a week ago against Westchester. Seth Morgan, you look at the numbers, they look pretty good besides that interception. 18 of 21 for 136 yards, a touchdown, a pick. A lot of 35. Ethan Williams has that big uh, 35-yard touchdown reception as well as three catches for 46 yards. Jeremiah Taylor, three catches for 30 yards. Cordell Batten, three catches for 21 yards. Barry Hill, three catches for 19 yards. It feels like with some of the injuries and the opportunities here, Ethan Williams kind of reminding me a little bit of what we saw last year from Alfonso Foray toward the end of the season with all the injuries Shepard had. They needed a guy to step up, and it seems like Williams has been that guy here today. And that's something that the Rams have shown, especially here in recent years. They have no problem at reloading at the wide receiver position. And, again, you mentioned those injuries coming up and just the next guy coming in able to come in and continue to make plays. So that's just a credit to the Rams coaching staff and how they're able to go out, recruit, and develop talent and develop that depth that comes to pay dividends throughout the course of a long football season. Defensively for Shepard, coming out leads the team in tackles with eight. O'Neal with six, Kowser four, McDowell three, coming out also with that interception. Uh, so definitely playing a big impact on today's day- game. Caleb Monaco, seven carries, 42 yards for Bloomsburg. Pringle gets you 22 yards on four carries. Ben Reese, 5 of 11, 48 yards, an interception, and a sack that he was sacked once. Caleb Monaco in the receiving game, also their leader in receiving yards of two catches for 22 yards. Owen Anderson, two catches for 17. Nas Jones, one catch for nine. Griffin Batchelor so far uh, not doing anything on his three targets. Defensively for Bloomsburg, Brady Thompson with five tackles, Nate Capers with four. Ryan Wartz with four, and Tom Getz with four as well. And here at the half, we're tied at seven. Let's go ahead and take another two-minute break. On the other side of this break, we'll send it to Kyle McLaughlin in the studio, who will have a halftime scoreboard update for you. Once again, your score here at the half, Shepard 7, Bluesburg 7. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a new or used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. 
Welcome into the halftime scoreboard show on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as Shepard tied with Bloomsburg at the half, seven apiece. Let's now take a look around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference for some scores. A few games already final as those kicked off at noon. And we'll start off with the final score Seton Hill 38, Edinburgh 20. Eight. So Seton Hill improves to now five and five. Edinburgh falls to two and seven. Final score: California, PA, gets the win over Mercyhurst by final score of fifty-eight to nineteen. So Cal U now six and two. Mercyhurst falls to two and seven. Final score as well. It looks like unless this is. Just to switch over to the fourth quarter, yes. Fourth quarter starting, my apologies here. 28-24, Westchester leads Lockhaven as that one kicked off at 1 o'clock. And 35 nothing. it's Slippery Rock leading Clarion right now as the Rock trying to remain undefeated. That one still going on as it's the start of quarter number 4 for them. Let's take a look at some other scores from around the PSAC as well. 24 to 10, East Stroudsburg leads Shippensburg. And another one here right at halftime. It is 14 nothing. Kutztown currently on top. Or excuse me, 14 to 3 actually. Let's update that here as it looks like Millersville has just kicked a field goal entering the half to make it 14 to 3 between Millersville and Cutstown and then you see now IUP 15 Gannon 6 that still has a minute to go in quarter number 2 so those are your scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference let's now take a look at some division 1 football and start off in the Big 12, a game that currently is going on on Talk Radio WRNR 106.5 FM AM 740. The West Virginia Mountaineers with some Disney magic down in Orlando right now up 41-21 over the UCF Knights with three and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. UCF has the ball, but WVU up by 20 in control looking like they will come out victorious and improve to 5-3 and three unless something crazy happens here in the final few minutes. Some top 25 scores for you quickly before we send it back to Bloomsburg. 11-14 to go in the fourth. It's number four, Florida State leading Wake Forest, 34-16. 8-12 to go in the third quarter. It's number six, Oklahoma, 21, Kansas, 17. And now with 2.58 to go in the fourth, Indiana is tied with number 10, Penn State, 24 to 24. I'll have more scores for you in the post-game scoreboard show, but for now that wraps things up here at the half. Again, 7 to 7, Shepard Bloomsburg is your score at the half. We'll take a two-minute break and then send it back to Travis Smith and Nick Verzellini with the call live from Bloomsburg. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. 
After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back here to Bloomsburg. Shepard Rams football here on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Our score here at the half. Shepard 7, Bloomsburg 7. McPherson Lee and Travis Smith here on the Mansion Friday Law Firm halftime show. Travis, uh, what do you think the two teams could do a little bit better of in the uh, second half when you're looking at the numbers there and just some, some things that you take away from it? Well, just looking at the first half, I think Shepard needs to be more committed to the running game. I know it was hit or miss at certain points. Jordan Barnett certainly seems to have the hot hand today. But, again, you have Jordan Barnett and Malachi Brown with the games that they had last week versus Westchester. You would think that they would be a little bit more incorporated into the offense, but so far you only have 10 carries between those two running backs as opposed to 21 passes so far in the game. So a little bit more balance between Run and pass on the offensive side of the ball I think will go a long way for Shepard try to establish some type of consistency on that offensive side of the ball. So far, it's really been hit or miss, herky-jerky for the Rams' offense so far. And Bloomsburg, they have an opportunity to get the ball here to start the second half, so I'm curious to see if they're going to come out in that five-wide receiver look. They had some success with it on that first drive. Let's see if they get back to it. Also, you figure Caleb Monaco had a good first half, so I expect to get him a lot more carries here in the second half of the game. But right now, Bloomsburg is showing that they're up for the task. And let's see what adjustments that the Shepherd Rams have made to go ahead and pull this game out on the road versus what is proving to be a very tough opponent. You mentioned Monaco. He's just five yards away. I'm sorry, seven yards away from that 2,000-yard club. He needed 49 become the 14th Bloomsburg Husky to have 2,000 career rushing yards. But we got some time here on the halftime clock. Let's go ahead and take a two-minute break, and then on this other side of that break, uh, we'll kind of get you set for the second half. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10. We're back in two minutes. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Hi, Cresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. 
with decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. We welcome you back here to Bloomsburg, here at Redmond Stadium. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith. Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, back in the studio, Colin McLaughlin, as we continue to get set here for the start of the second half between Shepard and Bloom. Our score, Shepard 7, Bloomsburg 7. You look at the uh, team stats, a lot of numbers pretty even. First downs, 8 for Shepard, 10 for Bloomsburg. Both teams have ran the ball for over 60 yards. Bloom has been more committed to that run game, and overall feels like they're running the ball better than Shepard because Shepard had a 42-yard run to get to its uh, 67 yards. They technically do have six, or they do have six more yards on Bloomsburg. But as we mentioned, Bloomsburg 19 for 61, so a little bit more consistency in the ground game for them. The Rams have, though, thrown the ball for more yards than Bloomsburg, 136 to 48. Both teams have ran just about 30 offensive plays. Shepard has over 200 yards of offense, but just seven points to show for it. Bloomsburg only has 109 yards of offense, but also has seven points at the half. So some of that due to that turnover early in the game. But the Huskies could have scored again. They had a turnover in the red zone, just one for two in those red zone conversions. Shepard three of seven on third down. One for two on fourth down. Hasn't even stepped foot in the red zone yet today due to the touchdown coming from 36 yards out. Possession time. Rams actually held the time of possession, 17 minutes to 13 minutes. So a lot of things that you would think Shepard would be dominating when you look at these stats in some ways, but they're not. And Bloomsburg has stuck around and and has played tough throughout the game and and not really given up those long drives consistently, even though Shepard's had a lot of time. A lot of that was due to that last drive of the second quarter. Other than that, Shepard was pretty much going three and out or not really doing a whole lot. And right now you imagine that Bloomsburg has to feel pretty good about the position that they're in. You ask most teams that are going into a game and they're the heavy underdog most of the times, the thing that you'll get from the opposing, or you'll get from that coach is you want to keep the game close, and then hopefully in the fourth quarter, especially if you're at home, something breaks in the fourth quarter in your favor. So right now, Bloomsburg is, is holding up to that end of the bargain. They want to keep it close. They're shortening the game. They're relying on that run game. They know that's their bread and butter, so they're not going to get out of their game plan. And fortunately for them, the score is such where they don't have to abandon their game plan so they can stick with their strength, stick to their guns, keep the game close. And then in the fourth quarter, you got a nice, rowdy home crowd that's at your back. Hopefully a ball bounces your way and you're able to make a big play in the fourth quarter to come out with a win. So Bloomsburg has to feel pretty good about the position that they're in right now, but we already know this Rams team. It doesn't take them much to put points on the board. Let's see if they can put together some sustained drives to try to blow this game open and have the momentum swing back in favor of Shepard University. Bloom will get the ball to start the second half. Our second half kickoff is brought to you by Ollie's VIP Northside, the best local spot to catch sports or hang out with friends. Stop by 36, Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. Ollie's VIP will see you for the game. So Bozick will kick it deep. Going back for the Huskies is Buckman and Monaco. And we are getting ready for the second half of action between Shepard and Bloomsburg and what's been a good game. 7-7 seven to seven hour score, sun out again on a beautiful October 28th day for football coming up on Halloween. Sure we'll run into some trick-or-treat on the way back. Boza kicks it deep. Monaco will field from the one-yard line, and Monaco still on his feet. Out of bounds, about the 21-yard line. Travis, excited for Halloween this year? What's your favorite costume that you've ever had? Well, my favorite costume? I was tempted to wear my costume today since we weren't going to have a chance to hang out during Halloween, but I was going to go with my favorite costume, and that is, of course, a sexy pirate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else would you What else would you wear? That was a dumb question. <laughs> First and 10 for the 21. We're actually going to dress up on the show on Tuesday, but All right. there won't be any sexy, <laughs> at least I hope. Colin always brings the sexy. <laughs> Here's the run on 
First down and 10, and it is stuffed in the backfield by Kevin Kowser. O'Neill also in there to help clean it up. And again, tough going on first down for Bloomsburg, but again, just trying to put the ball in the hands of their playmakers. And again, you can see that this offense trying to really protect their quarterback. Ben Reese has been the man so far today and has had some success here and there, but has gotten himself into trouble with some passes in the tight windows over the middle. Second and long, Reese looking deep. He's Takes got a, a man in shot. Anderson, and Anderson hauls it in across the 40, across the 30, and out of bounds around the 20-yard line. Ben Reese with a big deep ball down the sideline for Anderson, and Anderson burns the Rams. First really big passing play of the day for Bloomsburg. And that's one of the few times that we've seen all those changes in the secondary for Shepard really creep up and bite him on that play that time. Just a cardinal rule as a defensive back. You never want to start peeking in the backfield. He saw Reese rolling out to that side of the field. The corner kind of hesitated, and that was just enough for Anderson to get behind him. And Reese had to stare down the gun barrel on that play. He took a shot to the ribs in order to deliver that big pass. First and 10 from the 21. Reese looking to run. Gets some good blocking in front and has it inside the 15. Coming out makes the tackle. Running behind his big fullback on that play. Jack Ferguson leading the way. Yeah, Bloomsburg, one of the few teams in college football that run both fullbacks in and out there quite consistently. They got fullbacks, they got tight ends. If you're a fan of old school football, then Bloomsburg is right up your alley. And again, they've got some very skilled players at those positions. Second down and two, and that one. Blown up in the backfield. Looked like a miss <laughs> that was a play. read on the Rams, but Cole Scott's in there to make the play. Nobody wanted that football. The quarterback was trying to give it away. The running back didn't want it. They both took punishment on that play. you got to be more decisive. Give Cole Scott two tackles for that one. <laughs> He's tackling everybody. Third down, and two, or third down here for uh, Bloomsburg. Be about a third and four after the two-yard loss. On the Cole Scott play in the backfield, Reese sends a man in motion, takes the snap, will roll to the near side. The lefty slings it complete underneath to a wide open Caleb Mosco, but the ball came out, and Shepard has the football. Coming out with it is Richie Aguilar as Monaco hauled it in inside the 10-yard line, and for the second time today, the Bloomsburg offense turns it over in the red zone against Shepard. Monaco, one of the more sure-handed offensive players in the PSAC. Very unusual for him to put the ball on the ground. Reese did a good job getting outside the pocket, delivering it to Monaco. And as he's turning up, a nice big hit that time. Looks like Greer was able to put his hat on the ball and force that fumble. So good job by Greer, one of those defensive backs coming in off the bench and, again, continuing to make plays for that Rams defense. The true freshman in Miles Greer, who just had a ridiculous senior season of high school, they will run Malachi Brown, and Malachi Brown's got a big hole across the 25-yard line goes Malachi, but Miles Greer made over 100 tackles his senior year. Um, had, I think, you know, some touchdowns on defense, had some interceptions. But it seems like Shepard got a steal when they got him, and, and he's been very productive. We have an injury here on the play. Let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons player injured on the play and he's off the field now but definitely concerned I mean Bloomsburg has their their big D linemen have given Shepard some issues you know they don't normally use these many uh, 300 pounders in there but they've been using it against Shepard today it's been effective here's Malachi Brown on the ground again tried to bounce it to the outside Malachi gets a few ball, ball came out and Bloomsburg has the football that's been an issue. Brown just kept going. 
refusing to go down, but he coughs it up. Looks like Nate Capers was the defender that came up with the loose ball. Malachi Brown, it was a good patient run. He was running it to the outside, had some blocking out front. And, again, it's just something where, like Coach McCook talks about it, you just got to make the ordinary plays extraordinary. And what Malachi Brown has to learn to accept is that sometimes it's going to be a second or three-yard run. Every play isn't going to be a home run. And when you continue to try to force that, defenses, they're like sharks. And once you start putting that ball on the surface, it's blood in the water, and there's just a frenzy. So every defense that's coming to play Shepard knows that Malachi Brown is going to put the ball on the ground, and it only makes them that much more voracious when they're trying to go after the ball. And Malachi Brown has just had, had, has had trouble throughout this season trying to figure out their problem. Just take what the defense gives you. So, I mean, that, that's what's going to make the difference between good running backs and great running backs are the guys that can make those two- and three-yard runs when there's nothing there. Monaco just bouncing off of Gianni Gamble and heading out of bounds. That is the 20th fumble of the season for Shepard. Not certain how many Malachi has, but it, it's a lot, and, and – Obviously, that's been an issue for the Rams holding on to the football. Not just Brown, though. When you have 20 team fumbles, I mean, that's a lot as a team as well. Um, and, again, you know, he's, he's learning the position. But that's just been something that he struggled to do is hold on to the football. It's a seven-yard pickup, second down and three here for Bloomsburg. They'll run Monaco again, and Monaco stutter steps in the hole. Gets close to the sticks. Gamble that time, not allowing him to bounce off of him and makes the tackle. Should be third down at about two for Bloomsburg. So the fumble from Monaco might not hurt the Huskies. I mean, it did take a red zone possession off the board, but they're right back in the red zone after the Malachi Brown fumble. Third down here from the 16-yard line, third and two. Power I formation. They'll run Monaco off that left side. Shepard reading it perfectly and making the play. Jack Baxter set the edge, forced it back inside, and then Matt Bednarski there was, was there to make the stop. And again, I got faked out on that play. Reese did an awesome job of carrying out his fake to the backside. I bit on it, but nobody on the Rams' defense bit on the fake. And, again, they're just so tough to get to the edge. And the Rams' defense coming up big, forcing Bloomsburg to settle for a field goal. And this is certainly not a chip shot. This is about a 36-yard field goal attempt, so certainly not a gimme. And this is Augie George on the attempt it. And George's kick is up and no good. So kind of a wild sequence of events to start this second half. Bloomsburg goes down the field, fumbles the football inside the 10-yard line. Shepard takes over. They start to move it, and then they fumble it, give it right back. And now a missed field goal from 36 yards away. Keeps the game tied at 7 with 9.46 to go in this third quarter. And if Bloomsburg ends up losing this game, they're going to look back at the points they left on the board potentially. Two, two turnovers in the red zone, now a missed field goal uh, from 36. And right now, I imagine the sense of urgency probably has to be increasing for both sidelines because yeah. Shepard just really hasn't got anything on track yet. Bloomsburg continues to make plays and put themselves in good position. They haven't been able to capitalize, but they're still knocking on the door, and the Rams have yet to really find any sure footing out there on the offensive side of the ball. So Morgan looks to throw, throws high for Barry Hill and incomplete. He tried to knock it down, I believe. But in the area was Devin Fleming, and if that ball hangs up for another second or so, Fleming could have come away with an interception. Our third quarter brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services like home and office automation, home theater networking, audio video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. As we have a second down and 10 for the Rams with 9.45 to go in this third quarter, still tied at 7. Morgan underneath, complete to Hill that time. Tackle around the 24-yard line after a short gain. Our other third-quarter sponsor here on TV10 is Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. Hill did a good job of peeling off of Brian Jester's he was running a clear out route. I won't go as far as to say it was a pick play. The referees didn't call it, so I'm not going to call it that. But he did a good job of creating space for Hill to work underneath 
and setting up the Rams with a third and a bit shorter as opposed to third and ten. Third down and six. Morgan throws to the near side, complete to Jeremiah Taylor, but he went backwards, and West or Shepard will be forced to punt. Taylor. Another underthrown ball from Morgan to the outside, forcing Taylor to come back for it, and then he tried to make a play but didn't really have much room. And that was a dangerous play for Taylor. He went down, and you, you kind of hold your breath when you see players go down like that with little to no contact. He was trying to make a hard plan on that turf, mm-hmm. and, yeah, almost a hyperextended that left knee, so he got up kind of slow on that play. Griffin Batchelor to return this punt from Ryan Barrick. It's... A well-placed punt, and Shepard is there at the 30-yard line. Naeem Alexander, the special teamed beast for the Rams. He's just been, I mean, this year he's playing defense too, but, you know, when it comes to that, those guys on special teams that you look to make plays, Alexander consistently has been that guy. And when you're that guy on special teams, that means you're moving up that much more on the depth chart as your chosen side of the ball. So he's a defender. That's going to get you even that much more consideration because if you're able to go out there and make those type of plays on special teams, those coaches are like, look, we got a guy out there that's willing to make the most of the opportunity we're going to give him. So let's give him some more opportunities. And he's been able to come up big for the Rams so far. And I think that's going to be something for the Rams to try to break this stalemate. He's going to have to rely on something that they've done all year long is good special teams play. Here's – a play action fake to Pringle, a pass underneath, and intercepted. It was tipped by JT Komayow, and then he came away with the interception, I believe. His second of the day. It was a couple Rams defenders had an opportunity to play, and it was just a late decision by Reese. He was trying to work it in to Griffin Batchel on that play, and on those hitches, on those snags, that has to be your first read. You can't look it off and then come back to it. There were three Rams defenders. They were basically there playing rock, paper, scissors to figure out who was going to pick that pass off. Let's take a look at it again here up on the scoreboard. Coming out definitely with the first tip. I thought maybe Alexander was going to come in and get it, but I can't really tell, but I think Coming out was the one that ran out with the football, so I'm going to presume he was the one that picked it off. First down and ten. For the Rams now in Bloomsburg territory. What's been a wild third quarter. Jordan Barnett spinning away and now going backwards and only gains about a yard on the play. Good job by this Bloomsburg defense to keep up with their pursuit throughout that play. Hakeem Bacon finishing it off for the Huskies. Second and ten, actually no gain on the play after Barnett maybe had a yard or two on the initial gain. He remains the back here with two receivers to that far side and Taylor and Williams. With Bloomsburg having their struggles on offense, you figure this defense gets a lot of time on the field. So they're showing that that experience is that they're a pretty good ball club and the Rams have faced a couple stout defenses here the past couple of weeks. And right now Bloomsburg just certainly seems to be in that mix as far as just having really good linebackers. The coverage on the back end has been exceptional because you can tell the Rams are showing a lot of respect. They really haven't tried to work the middle of the field at all. They're really not taking any shots deep. They're just trying to keep things checked down underneath and trying to allow their athletes to make plays in space, but really not wanting to challenge those defensive backs for Bloomsburg. So showing them a lot of respect on the back end. Three-yard pickup, third down and seven for the Rams. Morgan throwing and intercepted. Warts coming away with the interception here on the near side. Morgan tried to find Gabe Bigby, but overthrew it, and it was picked off. And this third quarter, does anybody want to keep the football? (laughs) It's been a hot potato so far here in the second half, and this Bloomsburg defense certainly rising to the occasion. And again, Morgan hasn't thrown many interceptions. That's only his sixth interception so far this season, but two here today. And that one, he just forced it late to the out route, and it just wasn't an accurate pass. It sailed on him. That's something he's had an issue with this year. But fortunately for him, most of the time, he has those athletic wide receivers that can jump up and make plays that time. It was just great coverage on Bloomsburg, defensive backs, and Wirtz was able to come up. Wasn't even his responsibility on that play, but he's had great situational awareness, able to make a break on the ball and get a clean catch on the sideline. He got that one up off the carpet. And fortunately for him, that's a turnover for Bloomsburg. But right now, Bloomsburg is doing everything they can to stay in the game. Let's see if their offense is able to capitalize off of this turnover the way they were able to do so early on in the first half. 
Looks like we have a player down at the 34-yard line. I can't quite tell who it is, but it does look like maybe they're stretching them out, so it could be a cramp. That's our hope, and we'll keep it here for now. And, yeah, that he's quickly up here, but down on the play was Ryan D'Ambra, the linebacker, so that's a big loss if he is going to have to miss some time. He's now standing with no help, so I think he's all right. So he, he's the leading tackler for this Bloomberg defense, the heart and soul of that front seven, so you certainly don't want to miss his abilities. You want to talk about monster games. Last week had 17 tackles versus East Stroudsburg, nine of those solo. So I'm sure East Stroudsburg is probably thinking that there's probably two and three Ryan DeHambros running around on the field. I believe it was just a cramp. They're getting some fluids in them now. and Again, just an unseasonably warm day today. Yeah. So, the ball is back in the hands of Bloomsburg, and they're back with this five-receiver set. Quick pass complete to Nas Jones. Omari Terry shoves him out of bounds. A little bit of contact and some jarring on both sides, but the big tight end. I mean, that's the smaller Terry, but you wouldn't know it based on the numbers and some of the plays we've seen from Omari Terry this season. And again, that's something you'd like to see out of this Bloomsburg offense. You have some quality players on that offensive side of the ball for Bloomsburg and Jerry Griffin, bachelor wide receiver, and Nas Jones at tight end. Maybe get those two on the same side so they can kind of complement each other, put a little bit of pressure on defense as to who you're going to try to take away because Nas Jones, in my eyes, one of the better tight ends in all of the PSAC. Here's Pringle. Pringle on the carry on second and five, and Shepard coming up. I believe that was Johnson to make that tackle. Robbie Hart sticking his face in there. So it'll be third down for the Huskies from the 36-yard line. Game still tied at seven. It's been a wild third quarter, 5.50 to go in this third quarter. And Bloomsburg with a crucial third down. Third and five. Reese throws underneath complete to Bachelor, and he's still going and picks up some positive yardage to make it at least close to the first down marker. I think he will be about a yard or two short here on fourth down as I think he ran out of some real estate on this near side, but looks like the Rams, something out of nothing there. Yeah, it looks like the Rams had him pretty well boxed in on that play, able to make a couple defenders miss, some good blocks out there on the edge. It's going to be fourth and one, so they'll most likely punt it here from their own 40, but I don't know. Maybe maybe you play it aggressive. I mean, you don't want to give the ball back to Shepard, but they are going to bring the physical, the big package on. They're bringing both those fullbacks in. So Pringle in the backfield, so they're going, they're going extra beefy in the backfield. Ben Reese is 6'1", 195, but maybe you see a QB sneak and – at the very least, they're now going to burn a timeout to talk it over. Let's take a 30-second break. We're tied at 7. 5.34 to go in this third quarter. We're back at 30. Mommy, where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. Meat, corn, even pie. <laughs> and then the Traeger does the rest, which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. Fourth down and about a yard from the 40-yard line. Have to get the ball to just about the 41. It's a little bit short of that, but pretty much right at the 41 would be a first down. The ball is... Spotted here on the near side hash. And Bloomsburg brings in its fullback. They're looking to go big. I would expect QB sneak. Shepard stacked up on the line. Possibly Rams a hard count. jumped. It's Reese. He's not getting too much movement out there. I don't think but he it's, got it's, it. It's almost impossible to tell, really, from our angle. Shepard saying fourth down. I didn't think he got a whole lot of movement on that initial push. We'll see where they spot it. I mean, like we said before, very tough to tell from up here exactly, but I'm thinking this is, should be a turnover on downs based on what I saw initially. But we'll see, I guess, where he's at at the bottom of that pile. Shepard's certainly celebrating like they forced the turnover on downs. 
this would be a huge play in the game. I mean, a first down keeps the drive alive. Still no single from the official. So it looks like the referees are possibly calling for a measurement, but if that's where the ball is spotted, they're not going to get the first down. Yeah, we needed the right. nose of that ball to be on the 41-yard line. That but nose of the football is smack dab on the 40-yard line. That's, that's exactly a turnover where on down. it was pretty much before, maybe a half yard closer, but this looks like a turnover on downs. I'm with you, Travis. And I, I think it was something where the Bloomsburg thought that they may have been able to get the offsides call, so they the offensive did. line, yeah, the offensive line didn't look like they fired off the ball at all because there was no push up front. Let's see. But I think this is going to be short and be a turnover on downs for Shepard, and it is. About Clearly that. a yeah. turnover on downs. The Rams take over. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. The Rams defense winning on a, a uh, QB sneak, which is rare in the state of Pennsylvania that the Pennsylvania team doesn't win the QB sneak. <laughs> they trying it, but it was just a little bit discombobulated. Look, look like Shepard may have been. A brotherly push on <laughs> no, they didn't see, didn't see the push. Like I said, you know, Reese is only 6'1". He's not a huge quarterback. Which, I'm, I'm, you got those two big fullbacks. I'm like, guys yeah, behind you. Yeah, you figure I'm, you can push for the yard. I like the aggressiveness there from Bloomsburg to go for it, but it didn't work out for him. So we'll see if Shepard can take advantage. Coach Frank Sheptock, the 1986 graduate of Bloom, Bloomsburg, 8 and 22 in his third season of work. Here's Malachi Brown with a huge hole, great block downfield from the center, James Malachi Bell. Brown on the carry. Those capers in there on the tackle for Bloomsburg. And good patient run that time by Brown, just picking his way through the hole and a big pickup on first down. Coach McCook said this week they only wanted to give the football back to Bloomsburg as if they kicked it. Well, they do have a fumble today, but Malachi is back in the backfield after about an eight-yard gain. Second down and two, they'll run Brown again, and he finds the hole and gets the first down and more. Bringing the ball down to the 25-yard line. Looks like Warts and D'Ambra in on that tackle. Fisher that time with a good backside block, but Malachi Brown didn't take the cutback on that play. He just kind of put his head down, got skinny in the hole, was able to pick up the first down. Yeah, you'll definitely take that from the running game. First down and 10 for the Rams. 424 to go in this third quarter. Here's the wide receiver screen to Batten. Batten makes the catch. Ooh, ends tackle. up getting positive yardage. There is the big hit on the outside from Quinn Gaskill. On the reception. And Shepard going back to that screen game. Morgan's pass was a little bit off target. Made it tough for Batten to do much with it, but he did find positive yardage. Gets about four on the play. Second down and six. For the Rams, three receivers to the near side. They will run Malachi Brown off that right side. Brown with the good patience takes it inside the 20-yard line. Following his le- his guard, Ty Lucas. And it will bring up a th- third down for Rams. Just on the 20-yard line. So third and three. With 3.24 to go in this third quarter, we're still tied at seven. Taylor and Williams are the wide receivers to the near side. They'll go play action. Morgan looking over the middle for Ethan Williams, a double coverage and incomplete, and the flag comes in late. And that's unfortunate. The defender was trying to make a play on the ball, got tangled up with the wide receiver, and that's just too much contact for the officials to ignore, but they are having a discussion over there. Tough decision there from Morgan to try to force that one in. I thought for a second we might see the third interception of the day based on how that defender was breaking on the football. Okay, so they didn't call it, yeah. They're going to rule it essentially incidental contact. Which, and I, I think that's a fair call because the defender was clearly making a play on the ball, a very aggressive play on the ball. He didn't go through the receiver through his body or anything. Their feet just kind of got yeah. tangled up. So, again, this – Bloomsburg secondary has shown that they have been gained so far today. They really limited what these explosive Rams wide receivers are able to do in space and forcing Morgan to take a lot of checkdowns. And now the Rams offense having to settle for a field goal. And again, not a chip shot 
37-yarder coming up for the Rams. Yep, about a 37-yard field goal from Bozick. He's got a big leg, and the kick is good from 37 yards out, and the Rams take the lead for the first time today at 10-7. Here with 3.05 to go in this third quarter, we will take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. We welcome you back here to Redmond Stadium. It is Shepard 10, Bloomsburg 7 here in the third quarter. Shepard able to kick a 37-yard James Bozick field goal to get their first lead of the day. It was 7-0 for a long time. The Rams were able to score before halftime to make it 7-7. The third quarter has just been turnover after turnover and all sorts of wild stuff. But Shepard has taken the 10-7 lead. Kick off here, going to go and be fielded at the one-yard line. And Monaco is still on his feet. Robertson slowing him down. He's still going, though. And now you just hope he holds on to the football and doesn't get injured on this play as he takes it across the 30-yard line. But the Bozik 37-yard field goal, our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. So Monaco, a big return, sets up Bloomsbury pretty good here, Travis, and it's still only a three-point game. This is where we, we thought this third quarter Shepard was going to come out, you know, play like the team that we've seen for the majority of the season. But that hasn't happened, and a lot of that is credited to Bloomsburg. This is a better team than their record. That is clear. They're 1-7, and seven, but they don't look like a 1-7 and seven football team. They're still battling they're still playing with not at all this is a top-notch defense yeah this is a very well coached defense talent on that defensive side of the ball and 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 they've played that way you can see why they had such a close hard-fought game versus east stroudsburg last week a team that's had no problems putting up a lot of points here's a blitz on the rams and monica oh they got me with the reese fake i get they got me (laughs) earlier he's good with those ball fakes I just saw the Rams coming off the edge, and it looked like Monica was going to get killed, but Reese did a great job of faking it. Unfortunately for Bloomsburg, and I guess fortunately for Shepard, they had it covered on both ends. They had the run if that was what they went to, and they also had the pass underneath as pass falls incomplete. will bring up a second and ten for the Huskies from the 33-yard line. Monaco remains the back. Reese takes the snap. Throws underneath to Monaco in the flat. Naeem Alexander right there to make the tackle at the 30-yard line. So a loss on the play will make it a third and long. Hey, you hit a deep shot earlier to Anderson in this half on what looked like was going to be a scoring drive for Bloomsburg, but the turnover in the red zone prevented that. It is going to be a third and 12. From the 31. And, and Bloomsburg, they've had their opportunities to, no way to sugarcoat, they've had the opportunities to take control of today's game. But like you said, a couple of turnovers in the red zone has kept the Rams in it. Now the Rams with some quality special teams play able to take the lead. Shepard brings the blitz on third and long. Reese escapes the oh, pocket. Man. and He's got wheels. Reese has a first down and more into Shepard territory up to the 50-yard line. He outran Kevin Kowser. And Harold O'Neill and got the first down. We saw some dis- decent designed runs from Reese, but I didn't know he had that much speed. Well, you want to look back to him as more of a, a running style quarterback. You look back to last year, averaged 4.7 yards per carry, also had a touchdown run last year. So certainly athletic and mobile can get outside the pocket, and that time beat some very speedy defenders to the edge. First down and 10, here's a play a a reverse play from Bloomsburg as they get some success on it Gianni Gamble makes the tackle Griffin Batchelor on the carry again this Rams defense they're so fast and so athletic and so smart 
it looked like they had a convoy of blockers, and that play had a lot of green grass in front to make something happen. And, again, these Ram defenders are so quick to close to the ball. You might be able to get them out of position initially on that misdirection, but they're able to change direction so fast and then rally to the ball carry. They turned a what could have been a huge gain into a still a good gain on first down, but it could have been a lot more for Bloomsburg. Second and three. Another good play there from Reese as he gets the handoff, but again, you know, with his fakes, I wasn't certain if he gave it at first to Monaco, but Monaco is going to be short of the first down. It'll be third and short with the Aguilar in on that tackle for Shepard. And, and, and when you have a quarterback that, that carries out those play fakes and shown that he's a threat to run, what that does, it occupies defenders. You're essentially able to block defenders with your quarterback because they have to honor that fake. So if they're having to sit back, play discipline football, that means they can't go flying to the football at the point of attack, and it really puts the numbers in, in, in favor of the offense as far as running that football. Third and one, they'll fake Monaco. Reese will run and get the first down, I believe, up to the or down to the 40-yard line and should be a first down for Bloomsburg, that's the final play of this third quarter. Our score, Shepard 10, Bloomsburg 7. Let's go ahead and take a one-minute break. And when we come back with the fourth quarter, good one here between the Rams and the Huskies. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and W. R&R TV on YouTube. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Auto body. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back here to Bloomsburg, our score. Shepard 10, Bloomsburg 7 here as we begin this fourth quarter. It's first down, Huskies. Reese in the shotgun for Bloomsburg. Monaco remains the running back. They'll go play action. Reese under some pressure throws in. Smart. You Looks tell. like he wanted Nas <laughs> Jones initially. He wanted to make a bad decision. That's what he wanted to do. And then his better angels appeared, uh, appealed to him, and he threw the ball away. It was just that that went from pretty bad to pretty good for Reese. Again, showing he, he learned his lesson from the interception that he threw, that, that, that last interception that he threw where he was late throwing the ball to the snag over the middle. He yeah. wanted to throw it. You could tell he was itching to pull the trigger. But, again, Showing some growth here in, in, in a span of a game. Yeah, it's one of those plays where initially maybe it looks like it's there, but then the Shepherd defense recovers and, and kind of fools you on it. Here's a pass. This time it's there incomplete. Good pass there underneath, hauled in by Gabe Brower. And, and that was a good play design. That time you had the two wide receivers in the slot, and they were basically almost doing like a, a, a rub route. For each other. So one of those guys was going to be open and Reese just doing a good job of being patient, seeing which one of those wide receivers was going to become uncovered, and then he was able to step in and deliver an accurate pass. So it'll be another first down for the Huskies. First and ten from the 30-yard line. They'll run Monaco. Monaco getting positive yardage. Gianni Gamble. Queen, as well as Koma Yao in on that tackle. Our fourth quarter is brought to you by the Dutch Motor, the Dutch Miller Automotive Group. The key to your next car is at the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. So second down here for the Huskies, second about seven after the three-yard pickup. Early goings of this fourth quarter, 13:45 to go. Shepard up by three at 10-7, but Bloomsburg driving again against the Rams. Here's 
Another good fake. Reese looking for the end zone for Batchelor. Incomplete. Gianni Gamble there recovering on that deep ball shot. Great movement there in the backfield. I think maybe caught the corners looking in the backfield. And Once again, had a touchdown. You, got, you got young corners, and they're going to peek in the backfield, and that's something you don't do. boonsburg has been able to hurt them with that early on, and then the, the wide receiver, he just had to wait on the ball. If Reese was able to step into his throw, put a little bit more pepper on that, that would have got to him, and Gamble just – threw his hands up in desperation, and it was just enough to disrupt the concentration of Jerry Griffin Batchelor not able to pull that ball in cleanly for, again, another missed opportunity to score for Bloomsburg. Reese rolling out, looking deep down the field, and incomplete. His wide receiver slipped there, and he had a step. Brower, uh, Omari Terry was trailing and could have potentially come up with something there but instead it's going to be fourth down they're going to run the field goal unit on even though we've already seen a miss from 36 yards and Brower looked like he had a step on that play and it's just something that these Rams corners they're concerned about Reese rolling out I understand he's a running threat but you can't allow those wide receivers to release freely down the field if you don't have safety help behind you so again good communication is critical and right now there seems to be some breakdowns on the back end for Shepard fortunately for the Rams Bloomsburg not able to capitalize miss from 36 and miss from 45 interesting decision there to kick that field goal but again it's a three-point game so I understand it but it just doesn't seem like they have the leg strength in their kicker this fourth quarter brought to you by smallwood and small insurance your total insurance solution at 121 administrative drive in martinsburg call 304-263-3361 so you just got to be honest with yourself and realize what you have more importantly what you don't have and you you don't have that kicker that's going to be able to knock that down that's again like we said that's not a chip shot that's not an easy field goal to make and you're fortunate if you have a kicker in your program that can knock down those kind of kicks. But if you know that you're even iffy about having a guy like that, I, I think you keep your offense out on the field and you just take a shot. What's interesting is Kevin Kerrigan, who's also their punter, is their kickoff man, but then their place kicker is Augie George, as here is a uh, pass complete. And it may be something where George is, is probably just a little bit more consistent as far as extra points. Yeah. And the other kicker just gives you, you know, the the range that you would hope for. But so far, that, that range is yet to show up for the Huskies today. But George has struggled on those on those field goals as well. So here we go. Second down for the Rams. Second and about five after a five-yard pickup on the completion to Taylor, who has Ben Morgan's number one guy. And now with the clock starting to roll down here in this fourth quarter, still plenty of time in just a three-point game. But 12.45 to go. This is... An important drive for both teams. If Shepard can find the end zone for the first time in this second half, you feel good about things moving forward. Here's Morgan going to run the QB end around or fake it to the running back and just keep it there. QB keeper, I guess, is what I should say. First down. Naked boot. Yeah, there we go. (laughs) Again, the Rams, good job using that formation. They motioned, well, they shifted both tight ends over. That one tight end, he was covered up, so he wasn't even an eligible wide receiver on that play. But what you're doing, you're showing the defense everything's going to the right. Everything looked like it's going to the right. Then you have the quarterback faking that run to the right. He pulls it. He doesn't run the ball often, but that was just a good play call to catch that defense out of position. There's the physical running of Jordan Barnett. He's knocked out of bounds. A good one-on-one tackle that time. Man, Devin Fleming, he's been having a whale of a ball game so far today. He had that one missed tackle early on, but after that, he's been Johnny on the spot and bringing down Barnett one-on-one out there on the edge. He prevented a, a good play from becoming a much bigger play. Overall, this team tackles really well, yes. especially in space against a team like Shepard that thrives on plays like that. Yeah, I mean, that's where they you know make their money. Here's the... Pass over the middle, high and incomplete, intended for Barry Hill. Looked like Morgan kind of had to rush it to get it out there as pressure was coming off the edge and that was from one, Bloomsburg. Yeah, that's one of the few times that the Rams have really challenged Bloomsburg over the middle. This Rams offense showing a lot of respect to this Bloomsburg secondary. That has to be like the Rams' first attempt to try to get anything in between the hash marks. Looks like Nate Capers came on a blitz from the secondary that's enough to make you nervous <laughs> and it will be third down and about four for the rams, the rams they're going to call a timeout. timeout as this 
Bloomsburg crowd getting into it, knowing this third down is important. But let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. Our score, Shepard 10, Bloomsburg 7. Fourth quarter here between the Rams and the Huskies, 11.25 to go. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Welcome you back here to Bloomsburg University. Nick Versalini alongside me. Travis Smith here as we have a third down for Shepard. Third and four. The Rams burning a timeout. So just two timeouts remaining here trying to get the right play call in for this situation. That's Williams in motion. Morgan looking to throw. Morgan throws to Ethan Williams right at the line of scrimmage, and that is where he is brought down on the play. Making it there was Ryan D'Ambra, who has dealt with some cramps today, but D'Ambra, we know he's a great player. And, again, this Bloomsburg team tackling in space, just a gain of one on a third and four, makes it fourth and three, and the Rams will be forced to punt, and Bloomsburg again has life. Again, this Bloomsburg defense making the Rams play conservative. And a lot of times the Rams, they win those one-on-one battles with a broken tackle or, or a shifty move. But so far, the Huskies not playing around. Almost blocked that punt on that play. Griffin Batchelor will field and return but not go anywhere. Shepard chasing it down, making the tackle there for the Rams was Gio D. Tolbert. So good tackle there in space. and. And uh, Bloomsburg will have it here. And Bloomsburg just trying to rely on their playmakers to see if they can break something open. Again, he doesn't get called on often to return punts, but Griffin Batchelor has shown that he is an explosive athlete and an opportunity for a touchdown just a short while ago, but one of the guys on that Bloomsburg offense that can make something special happen with the ball in his hands, and the Rams defense have done a really good job of just limiting his role in the offense today. So 10.40 left in this ball game. Shepard hanging on to a three-point lead, but Bloomsburg has the ball here, first down and 10. Reese will throw it over the middle to Griffin Batchelor in space, and McDowell makes the tackle. But a big play there for the wide receiver. Haven't seen him involved a whole lot on offense today. And Ben Reese with one of his better throws over the middle today. And a good play-action pass that makes the defense, you want them to either bite on the fake or at least just kind of stand still to see what was going on that time. The Rams bite up on the fake, and they gave him a clean look. A lot of times when Reese has made those quick throws, there's been a couple people over there, and those Rams linebackers do a good job of buzzing out underneath of those routes. That time they cleaned everything out, and it was just a one-on-one with the wide receiver versus McDowell. Looked like so there was an offside was there. Offsides and Richie Aguilar, so they'll take a shot down the field. Alexander's hey, going to get hit with a pass. Heady play by Reese. Heady play by Reese. So drawing two flags on that play to Shepard. Griffin Batchelor, the intended receiver. I think Naeem Alexander's going to get pass interference. And also Richie Aguilar jumped off sides. They'll take the pass interference. And, uh, so now there's discussion. The, the, the Rams defender was saying that he was being held for making a play on the ball. So this could possibly go against Bloomsburg. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it did look with, like with, both guys were fighting for it. Okay. But, yeah, I, I felt like Alexander, since he didn't make a play for the football, was probably going to get the penalty. Now, not a spot file in college, just 15 yards, but still hurts. It's a first down now for Bloomsburg. As they just, move the ball closer toward midfield and closer to Shepard territory in just a three-point game. And that was a smart play by Reese. He knew that he had the free play on that one, but everybody was kind of standing around. It was kind of the time he was thrown off, so it would have been easy for him just to throw the ball on the turf, take that penalty, and, you know, get a couple yards. But he still took the shot downfield, took the free play, and was able to draw pass interference and get a big gain on that play. Here's the run. No real room. Amari Terry makes the tackle. It actually is going to end up being pretty positive yards because they threw him forward. Monaco 
<laughs> Amari Terry. This like, he, he, he's a fiery defender. Sometimes it gets the better of him. That time was just fighting, doing everything he could to get down Monaco. Monaco, he, he's a tough running back to bring down. He, he's not a very big guy, but tough to bring down. Monaco, 5'10", 195, so uh, good stature and a very difficult guy to bring down one-on-one. And Terry didn't want to lose that battle. Reese throwing to Monaco out in the flat, has the first down. Got Monaco matched up with Koma Yao, and he's they, been very good out of the backfield today. And, and, that, and that's a tough cover. And that's something where you could tell Bloomberg has really zeroed in on the fact that Dwayne Grantham isn't out there. I don't know if you go and, and try to go for that mismatch if you have Grantham out there because he is a dangerous defender in pass coverage. So I don't think you challenge him in the same way that you can go after JT Komoyao, who's a very good defender himself, already has an interception on the day, but the, the matchup is in favor of Bloomsburg. He's got two interceptions. got two, that's right. Reese stepping up, looking to run, and Reese has some room down that sideline, steps out of bounds. Harold O'Neill is the one there. There is a flag in the secondary at the 15-yard line, so we'll see if this goes against Shepard or Bloom. But this Huskies team on the verge of potentially pulling off a massive upset. Shepard coming in ranked 20th. Running, holding, defense number and a holding call on Naeem Alexander will move the ball even further down the field. But you know, Shepard coming off of its best performance of the season. Everything seemed to be leaning toward well, what does Bloomsburg have to play for besides spoiler? Why should they come out and be motivated today? Well, they have come out looking to pull off this upset. They are still trailing, but they are moving the ball into Shepard territory down to the 21-yard line. And to be honest, just looking at how many times they've been down here, they should be winning today. And winning big. They've been down here quite a few times, coming away with nothing. First down, four a big run for Pringle. Pringle inside the 10. And Such a good, Miles patient Spear draw a touchdown play. touchdown saving tackle. Oh, man, that, 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 that takes a steely nerve on that one. And you have those defenders crashing down. There's going to be a flag on the play. You could tell this Rams defense getting a bit frustrated out there because these Huskies just keep on somehow, some way, able to make plays here and there. And you can see that sense of urgency starting to spill over a little bit for the Rams, realizing that this time is ticking away. Yeah, we still got eight minutes, and this has been a wild game, so don't count anything out at this point. But what a throw by the official on that flag. <laughs> you can't lose your poise. Can't lose your composure. This is a close game, hard fall, and, and penalties like that can, can really swing the momentum in favor of your opponent. And I understand the Rams' defense, they've been out there for long stretches and have made a lot of plays today. But you can't let that emotion boil over and cost your team yardage and field position. It's already going to be first and goal. It's now going to be first and goal inside the five. So, Man, that was a good draw play by Bloomsburg. That was just well-timed, well-blocked. The offensive line did a good job of creating a huge hole up the middle. Those linebackers were flying out. They've, they've had their hands full trying to cover Monaco out of the backfield and cover those flat passes. So those linebackers cleared out quick. And Pringle was able to take advantage of that empty space in the middle of the field. So they move the ball to about the four. First and goal for Bloomsburg from the five, four yard line. I think it's at the five, actually. So from the five, first and goal. Three receivers set Anderson and Bowers. Bowers. Anderson and Bowers, the wide receivers to the near side. We got Griffin Bachelor matched up one on one to the top of the yep. up top. So we've already seen Reese Jones yeah. in at tight end. And Pringle is the back here down by the goal line. Pringle. That's tough. You got a couple good weapons down into the red zone. You got Nas Jones. That's a young quarterback's best friend when you got a quality tight end like that. And then you got Griffin Bachelor. You know he's chomping at the bit, hasn't had very many targets today, and credit the Rams defense for kind of limiting his role in the offense, but you realize that Bloomsburg, if they're going to go down, they're going to go down with their big guns, so they're probably going to take a shot to Griffin Batchelor. Not certain what Coach Sheptock is frustrated with, but he is still yelling at this near side official around the 10-yard line, and Coach McCook having his own conversations around the 20-yard line as Sheptock having to be 
held back to the sideline. I'm, I'm not certain what he's so mad about because he did get the penalty and his team's potentially going to take the lead here, but something has really frustrated him. You can tell, I mean, all day he's been very emotional, very animated on these sidelines, a guy that clearly wants to win. I mean, his team has been so close all season long. They're one in seven. What this win would do for the Bloomsburg That's the, program. He needs it. Yeah, he needs it for his guys. They have an opportunity to get a big win like this. Ball at the five-yard line. Bloomsburg knocking on the door. Pringle the back. They'll run him up the middle. And Shepard just not letting him go is Jack Baxter to make the stop. Cedric O'Forey came in and made that initial hit, but Baxter, once he got to him, he was not going anywhere from the big D lineman's grasp. Maybe a yard on the play will be second and goal. And if we've said it once, we've said it a million times, this Rams defense has been bend but don't break all year long. And they have an opportunity to prove that again here with this drive. And now Reese really becomes dangerous because he's shown he's been able to get outside the pocket. He has good play fakes, and there's no tougher place to stop it out on the field than when you're inside the red zone. Second and goal, though. Go Pringle. Pringle trying to get to the edge. Sheds off a tackler. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bloomsburg. From four yards out, Pringle takes it in. And the Huskies regain the lead, 13-10. And not too often you see teams get to the edge and have success against that Rams defense, but they've been out there for an extended period of time. That time, Baxter and Greer both had shots at the ball carrier, but Pringle is tough to bring down. Able to use that size, use that speed, use that athleticism to get out to the edge, turn it up, and then able to tap dance just inside the pylon to get the score for Bloomsburg. Get Pringle some Pringles after the game. There you go. Can't have just one. (laughs) Give him the whole container. (laughs) The extra point is up and good. It is Bloomsburg, 14, Shepard, 10, but don't go anywhere. 7.27 left in this ball game. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. We welcome you back here to Bloomsburg. Shepard has taken the lead, or I'm sorry, Bloomsburg has taken the lead over Shepard, the upset pending here still a lot of time though 14 to 10 7 27 left the rams have been in this situation before this season they played a ton of close games at the beginning of the year the last three weeks they've been pulling away they've been beating teams by double digits you felt like Shepard was heading in the right direction but a step back this week but bloomsburg a better team than their record one in seven but not your typical one in seven they've been through a lot of close games they're in another close one they haven't been able to come out in these ones Shepard has So we'll see if that continues. Malachi Brown will field it on a short kickoff. Malachi Brown gets a good return for the Rams out to the 30-yard line as Ty Pringle scores from four yards out. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. And Ty Pringle, a bit taller than your typical running back, 6'1", 180-pound sophomore, Coming off of a quiet game last week, only had four carries versus East Stroudsburg. Also had a couple catches for 18 yards, but being a little bit more involved in the offense, they rode Monaco all the way down to the goal line. He must have ran out of gas. They put in Pringle, but the bigger running back able to punch it in for Bloomsburg. Morgan looking to throw here on first down 10. He's got Batten over the middle at midfield, hauling in the catch. The true freshman Cordell Batten continues to make plays for this team. That time Batten working against Quentin Gaskell. Able to bring that catch in over the middle after taking a pretty good shot. And Shepard has not really worked the ball over the middle of the field. And I think that's to Morgan's strength when he's able to work the ball in between the hash marks. He's a very accurate passer when he's able to step up and make those kind of throws. Morgan throws near side complete to Jester, and he hauls it in. A very rare catch from the tight end, but Brian Jester makes the play there. 
Jester. That is only his sixth catch of the season. I don't believe he's had a catch in the past three weeks. And that's something that has yet to emerge in this Rams offense. We know that they have that capability of incorporating their tight ends. When you think back to last year, the big year that Brian Walker had, but certainly nobody of that caliber yet to emerge for this Rams ball club this year. Yeah, I mean, I mean here we go. Second down, throw for Taylor incomplete. These guys aren't really built the same way Walker was. They're built as more blocking tight ends uh, when you look at it. They're not that 6'4", 6'5", 230 that you know you saw from Brian Walker and uh, Alex Wetzel. They're more 6'2", 6'1", you know, big blocking guys. And they've been great blockers, but, yeah, you're right. They haven't really been a huge part of the offense. But here we go again, third down for the Rams. Bloomsburg bringing some heat right up the middle. And they get some pressure on Morgan. He throws off his back foot, caught by Batten, and he has the first down. An unbelievable play from the Rams. It looked like they were going to get the sack. Morgan stood strong in that pocket, found Cordell Batten, and then Batten made a play after the catch. Seth Morgan, you got to give credit to him. He's taken some shots this season. That time, under pressure, still completes the pass. First down and 10 for the Rams with just over six minutes to go. A lot of time left in this ball game. Morgan looking to throw, firing to the far side, complete to Jeremiah Taylor, and he's bumped out of bounds again. It's Devin Fleming. So he, he, he doesn't get top billing coming into the game as one of their premier defenders, but my goodness, he has shown up today. He plays with a, he certainly plays with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, I mean, he's been really good out there making tackles in space like we've said all day. This Bloomsburg defense has flown to the football. Morgan throwing again, looking for Jeremiah Taylor, short of the first down marker, pushed out of bounds. Fleming was in the area. It will bring up a third down for the Rams in they, short. And a good job of Seth Morgan just taking what the defense gives you. That time Fleming, realizing that he has one-on-one coverage with Taylor, backs off, gives him the underneath route. Taylor recognizing that, takes the underneath route. Makes the easy catch, picks up a couple yards. Now you got a third and short. Now you have access to your whole playbook. You can still run it, or you got some high percentage passes that you can use to attack the defense. Third and three, just over five minutes to go, and we have a timeout, I believe, coming in. Taken by the Huskies. That is their second timeout of the second half, so they only have one left. Let's go ahead and take a 30 second break. Our score, Bloomsburg. 14, Shepard 10, but the Rams are driving. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Welcome you back here to Bloomsburg. Redmond Stadium brought out a pretty good crowd here for this ball game. Shepard coming in 7-1, and one, ranked 20th in some of the polls. Bloomsburg 1-7 has been a tough team throughout the season, but they haven't been able to get wins. They've come up short several times. Last week losing to East Strasburg, one of the top teams in the PSAC, 24-16. I think their worst loss is 24-3 against Kutztown, and from what we were hearing, it was much closer than that. 14-10, our score, 507 left. Morgan takes the snap. Morgan rolls to the right, looking down the field, throws back to the far side for Jeremiah Taylor. Jump ball and incomplete. Again, Fleming making a play on the football. <laughs> Fleming there, also Hakeem Bacon. Going up, you need a little extra help when you're going up against Taylor that time. That would have been probably the greatest catch of the season. That would have been Taylor, the play of the year. Yes, if he was able to bring that one in. My goodness. I was Such surprised Morgan even got that one there, yeah. considering how far he rolled to the right to come back to the left, looking like Patty Mahomes. Yeah. Fourth down, and the Rams will burn a timeout. 14-10, 4.58 left, a lot of time, but Shepard probably going to go for it here, down by four. This is Shepard Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in 30. 
Your master's degree is as close as Shepherd University. Shepherd's graduate programs are perfect for working adults and will prepare you for the next step in your career. Choose from several degrees perfect for educators, an accredited MBA program, and a master's degree in Appalachian Studies. Visit shepherd.edu slash gradstudiesradio to get started today. Finish your master's or pursue a doctorate in nursing practice. To learn more, visit shepherd.edu slash gradstudiesradio. We welcome you back here to Bloomsburg. Our score, Bloomsburg. Yes, Bloomsburg, 14, Shepard, 10. Fourth quarter, 4.58 left in this ball game. It's a fourth down for the Rams, fourth and three from the Bloomsburg 27-yard line. Ball game on the line. Shepard scored on a fourth down earlier. That was their only touchdown to Ethan Williams. Morgan off his back foot for Taylor. Jump ball! Did he get a foot no. in? No, incomplete. Complete. Fleming in coverage, making another big stop for the Huskies. And Jeremiah Taylor couldn't get a foot in bounds to get the first down for Shepard. With 4.52 left, Bloomsburg takes over. This is un- unreal. Nobody saw this coming heading into today. But Bloomsburg has an opportunity. They have the football late in the fourth quarter of a chance to run out the clock. Fleming just doing a good job of not initiating any contact on that play. A lot of times on plays like that, you'll see pass interference get called because the defender wasn't able to get his head around. But Fleming able to not make contact with the wide receiver, still did enough to disrupt the ball, and Jeremiah Taylor goes down hard on that play. Looks like he may have knocked the wind out of himself. He's a bit slow to get up. But again, this Bloomsburg defense rising to the challenge and really putting a lot of pressure on this Shepherd Rams football team. Here's a first down and 10. Monaco running up the middle, running hard, breaking out of a tackle of Harold O'Neill. Jack Baxter drags him down at the 34-yard line. And Monaco is just so strong. I mean, Baxter had him wrapped up around the waist, and he was still able to pull him for an extra two yards after the contact. So Monaco, he's just, he's just showing all types of ability so far today. We knew he was good coming into today's game. You knew he had that record in mind, but right now his prize is a bit bigger. He wants the upset of the year. Still a lot of time left in this one, but second down and three for the Huskies. Monaco going to be stopped short. Harold O'Neill, Jack Baxter in on that one. Johnson in there as well. will be third down here for the Huskies. In a big juicy dilemma right now for Bloomsburg. What do you do? It's third and short. You've been running the ball effectively. You want that clock to keep ticking, but you also need to move those sticks. You know that the Rams defensive line, they are stout at the point of attack. They've already denied you on a fourth and short. So right now, you've got a big decision to make, and that's why those coaches get paid the big bucks and buy Pepto-Bismol by the bulk. (laughs) Yeah, third and one. They're not going to line up in that I formation, at least not yet. It looks like. Bloomsburg is going to burn a timeout. So, you know, both time teams have used quite a few of their timeouts here in this fourth quarter. 14 to 10, our score, 332 left. Let's take a 30 second break. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Welcome you back here to Bloomsburg, Redmond Stadium. Our score, Bloomsburg, 14, Shepard, 10, 3.32 to go in this fourth quarter. It's a third down and one. Reese is all alone in the backfield. He's going to roll out, look to throw. Monaco is open, and Monaco has the first down. That was the same play that they ran down towards the goal line, but that time Monaco didn't fumble the ball. 
So very tough to stop when they motion Monaco out to that multiple wide receiver side. Those wide receivers, they're essentially just running a clear out and giving a nice, easy throw and catch for the quarterback and the running back. you got a shorthanded running back like Monaco. You get him the ball in space. Good things are going to happen in that time. The good thing was they moved the chains. That's there all day for Bloomsburg. They've had Monaco in the flat a ton. There he gets the first down. Knocked out of bounds by Jaleel Singleton. Under three minutes to go now in the ball game. They're going to run it. Kowser in the backfield gets a big play on first down and 10. Man, he just blew that one up from the jump. Bring it back to the 41-yard line. will be second and long. We have another timeout taken by the Rams. Let's take another 30-second break. Our score, Bloomsburg 14, Shepard 10. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10. Shepard has burned its final timeout. Kowser played that ball. Such- when will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. He's trying to pull off a major upset over the Shepherd Rams. The Rams are out of timeout now. Timeouts with 2.49 to go in this fourth quarter. It is second down and 13 for the Rams, or for the Huskies from their own 40-yard line. Reese hands it off to Monaco. Monaco... Carrying it forward, getting positive yardage across the 45 to the 46-yard line. It's going to be a third down and long. I would presume the Huskies will keep it on the ground since Shepard's out of timeouts. You can burn another 40 seconds after this play or so. And this one for Bloomsburg, you really don't have to overthink it. Nobody else needs to touch the ball other than Caleb Monaco. Yep. You, you, you dance with the one that brought you, and Caleb Monaco has just been that pace setter. For the offense, he's allowed you to protect your quarterback who's had to struggle when he's had to sit back in the pocket and read the defense, but it makes his job a whole lot easier when he's got number five standing on his left-hand side. So they will run Monaco. Monaco has a huge hole. He's got the first down and smartly goes down at the 40-yard line. Bloomsburg won it with a big run from Caleb Monaco. The Rams are out of timeouts. The sideline is going crazy. One and seven, Bloomsburg. Might have just upset seven and one, Shepard. Again, from the opening whistle, this Bloomsburg team went out there and played their tails off. They came in with a chip on their shoulder. They come in with a record like that. You best believe they're hungry for a win. And they've gone out there and played that way. They've made some mistakes here and there, but they did not let those mistakes take away their confidence they kept knocking at the door the rams weren't able to make any type of distance between themselves and so far bloomsburg has been doing everything they need to right now they're going to take a knee and run out the clock hats off to bloomsburg they play a heck of a ball game to get this win yeah i mean this is a great win for this program a team that has been so close all year you know a few games go their way maybe they're a 3-4 win team but they're one in seven. Nobody really saw this coming, but you look back at those box scores, you see how close they were against some of the other top teams in the PSAC, and maybe it's not as big of an upset as it feels like, but at the end of the day, your record is who you are or whatever Bill Parcells said. You are what your record says you are. And, you know, it, I mean, in terms of playoffs, this might have knocked Shepard out. A, a loss to a one in seven team, now a two in Two and seven team is not going to look good on your resume. And Bloomsburg charges the field as they take their final kneel down. The Huskies are going to get a 14 10 upset win over the Shepherd Rams here at home. Yeah. Give us your initial thoughts. Man, Bloomsburg defense played absolutely lights out. The Rams stayed conservative, never really got into a rhythm on the offensive side of the ball. And even though Bloomsburg missed some opportunities to score in the red zone, and we kind of thought them going down, not able to come away with points, 
that kind of sealed their fate right there because you figure that that Shepard offense was eventually going to get on track, that they were eventually going to start putting up points, and just the Rams offense never really got on track. The running game really wasn't consistent. The passing game, you could tell. Bloomsburg had a game plan, and they stuck with it through thick and thin and really forced that Rams offense to play super conservative, made the Rams turn the ball over on offense, and just in all three phases of the game, Bloomsburg was ready for the challenge, and they came here and was able to get a big win in front of a big home crowd. You could tell that this program was hungry for a win, and there's something that you can never count out. It's when you have a group of athletes that believe in a common goal. We'll take a two-minute break. Once again, your final score here today, Bloomsburg 14, Shepard 10. On the other side of that two-minute break, we will have the Palace Lounge post-game show. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood, West Virginia is closing its doors forever. I'm Lori, and my father started this jewelry store 48 years ago. It's bittersweet for us to retire and go out of business, but we are so, so grateful to you. I'm Dave. Stop by now and receive up to 70% off our entire inventory. It's our way of saying thank you to our cherished clients who have treated us like family for so many years. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. It's the post-game show. As we recap the scoring, bring you stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TD10 broadcast team. Welcome you back here to the post-game show. Our post-game show is brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edward Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg of a full lunch and dinner menu. With daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere, check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page. Our final score this afternoon here from Bloomsburg. Bloomsburg pulls off a shocking upset win over the Shepherd Rams, 14-10. to It was a hard fought ball game. The Rams fall for the second time this season, which could have Huge impacts on their, their chances of making the postseason, considering they weren't going to go to the PSAC championship, most likely, if Kutztown won out. So that was going to prevent any chance of being a conference champ. You thought maybe the committee would favor Shepard over Kutztown, even if Kutztown, uh, unless Kutztown won the PSAC, then it got really interesting. But you still felt like they were going to get in with just one loss. Now two losses. Kutztown could still win the PSAC. They're probably going in. Slippery Rock's going to, if they win the PSAC, they are looking like a lock right now. But that's all things to talk about on the Sports Mix this week, uh, which tune in 12 to 1 each day and re-aired from 5 to 6 on our Facebook page as well as on Talk Radio WRNR, 106.5 FM and AM 740. But, Travis, I mean, just, I mean, uh, uh, give credit to Bloomsburg. You know, this is a team that's battled all season. And I said it this week and I said it today throughout the game. You never know what to expect in, in college football, and this is a team that even though their record is not good and they don't look the best, they've fought, they've risen to the occasion each and every time. Shepard, on the other hand, has had a lot of close games, has had games be closer than you initially thought they would be, but it just seemed like, based on what we saw last week, this team got it on, on the right track. They were going to cruise today, and it just didn't happen. 
And looking back over my keys of the game today, the first thing I wrote down for Shepard was do not overlook your opponent. You know, you had that East Stroudsburg game coming up on the horizon, and it, it, I really don't think Shepard, like, took them lightly, but they certainly didn't come in with, with the same kind of focus. They didn't or, seem very intense. Yeah, they, like, yeah, the sense of urgency wasn't there today, and, like, they really didn't do the things that they do well on offense, and they never really got into a rhythm. And while they were sitting there trying to figure things out, you could just tell the Huskies, they were swinging for the fences with every single play. They were trying for it on offense, on defense, on special teams, and that Huskies defense, they really showed up and showed out today, really forced Shepard to be super conservative. Shepard rarely challenged them over over the middle, and that's one of the better aspects when this Rams offense is really clicking on all cylinders is when Morgan is able to work between the hash marks, and it just looked like Shepard wanted no parts of that today. And, again, this Huskies defense really set the tone. You look over Caleb Monaco, really set the pace for the offense, able to protect their quarterback and Ben Reese. They didn't ask him to do too much, just manage the game. He had a couple costly turnovers early on in the game, but this Bloomsburg team just continued to knock at the door, knock at the door, and the Rams just never really had an answer, never really had that sense of urgency. And Bloomsburg was able to come away with a big win in front of a big home crowd. They had the band going today. They had a big home crowd, and they came away with a huge win. And this is something that could really ignite this program because, like we mentioned, they have a lot of young football players, not too many seniors on this ball club. So there are going to be a lot of guys on this team next year that are going to remember this win and come in with that much more confidence going into next season in the Rams you got to shake off the dirt get refocused and play some football you don't know how things are going to shake out at the end of the year if you can get upset other teams can get upset so you've got to maintain your focus and and take care of the things that you can control and that's their game next week against East Stroudsburg which still a lot riding on the line for both of those ball teams two very good football teams so looking forward to another ball game coming up good ball game coming up next week but just Bloomsburg made the most of their opportunities, and the Rams did not. Yeah, and I mean, Shepard's not used to losing these kind of games to PSAC teams that you don't really think about toward the top, and really the only ones that have consistently give them issues is, is Kutztown. Everybody else has fallen victim to the Rams in a blowout fashion, uh, but Bloomsburg pulls off this, this win here today, and I think at the very least, even if Shepard doesn't qualify for the postseason, a lo- another loss or two would – I mean, not just not be Shepherd football. And, and I think you're playing for pride at that point as well. So, you know, I think that's also something to consider here moving forward. But you're right, Travis. It's certainly not over or anything like that for the Rams, but they're going to need some help probably to get in. You never know what can happen, though. And you never know how the committee or, or whoever's uh, deciding on these things is going to look at it. But let's go ahead and get into our postgame stats. The stats are brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, West Virginia's largest Pandora retailer on Route 11 South Inwood taking care of you like nobody's business. We'll start with the Rams. Seth Morgan today, 198 yards passing on 27 of 37. That's a lot of attempts to only get 198 yards. Just one touchdown through the air as well. He ran the ball one time for eight yards on the ground for Shepard. Inconsistent today. Jordan Barnett finishes with 69 rushing yards on eight carries, which is a good average, but he did have a 39-yard run to go along with that. Malachi Brown struggled to get much going on the ground today for the Rams, just 21 yards on his nine carries. That's only 2.3 yards per carry. In the passing game, or on the receiving game, I should say, Cordell Batten leads the team in receptions with six catches for 58 yards, a long of 22 on the day. Ethan Williams had a big first half, quiet second half, four catches, 47 yards, and a 35-yard touchdown. Jeremiah Taylor, seven catches, 45 yards, couldn't quite come up with the big third down catch, or, or I'm sorry, the big fourth down catch, or the catch in the end zone. And then Barry Hill finishes the day three catches for 19 yards. On the Bloomsburg side, you look at it throwing the football. Ben Reese, as we mentioned, not a huge day, but did enough. 14 of 26, two picks, no touchdown passes, 168 yards. On the ground for Bloomsburg, their guy, Caleb Monaco, he goes over that 49 yards that he needed heading into the day to be join the 2,000 rushing yard club in terms of a career. He had 19 carries for 78 yards, no touchdowns today. Ty Pringle, who scored the game-winning touchdown, eight carries for 38 yards and a score. And then Ben Reese also had 33 yards rushing. Receiving the football today, Monaco had six catches 
for 40 yards to go along with those 78 rushing yards. Owen Anderson, three catches, 79 yards. Griffin Batchelor didn't do much in the passing game. Two catches, 25 yards. And Nas Jones, two catches for 14 yards. And, again, Bloomsburg gets the win here today, 14-10. to 10. That does it for your postgame stats. Travis, let's get into your awards. We'll start with the electrifying play of the game, brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer. They're located at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online at Orsini's.com. Well, electrifying play of the game. Initially, I was going to give it to Miles Greer. He had the forced fumble in the red zone in the third quarter. It really seemed like that was going to turn the tide in favor of the Shepherd Rams. But I think you got to give it to the running back that had the game-winning touchdown. Ty Pringle comes in. Caleb Monaco kind of set the tone, was able to get them down inside the red zone. But Ty Pringle made an excellent play to rumble in to get that go-ahead touchdown. So my electrifying play of the game, that's who's going to get it, Ty Pringle's touchdown run. Yeah, I mean, essentially that forced fumble didn't matter because Shepard would fumble it right back just a few plays later. But you're right there. I mean, obviously game one play got to be your electrifying play of the game. What about our collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, family-owned, offering superior customer service and great pricing for a job done by experienced certified technicians. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. A lot of good tackling today, but not too many big hits that really jumped out to me. But the one that did was number seven, Quentin Gaskell for Bloomsburg coming up. Had that big hit on the swing pass in the third quarter with about 345 left in that quarter. Coming up on that swing pass again, that that, that secondary for Bloomsburg was just flying around making plays all day today. But Quentin Gaskell, we knew he was one of their stars in that secondary. and He certainly came up big on that play, able to make a big hit. So he gets my collision of the game. What about the good hands catch of the game brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance for all of your insurance needs? Call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596 or stop by 724 Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. Catch of the game, it's going to go to Ethan Williams, the 35-yard touchdown catch on a fourth down to then tie up the ball game for Shepard. There was only 38 seconds left in the second quarter, so that was certainly a big play in the context of the game. So my catch of the game goes to Ethan Williams, and I think with the injuries beginning to mount, we may see some more of him out there on the field for that Rams offense, but Ethan Williams gets my catch of the game. Yeah, we'll definitely see. Uh, Hopefully Cam Dorner can come back soon, but Williams has played well uh, the last few weeks. What about your player of the game brought to you by Bodwell Insurance Solutions, a local professional will help you with all of your Medicare needs. Go to BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or call 304-283-0864. Well, he had a missed tackle early in the game and seemed like that ticked him off for the rest of the game. He just played like a wild man. It's got to go to Bloomsburg defensive back, Devin Fleming. He played his butt off. He had some really good plays where he knocked some of those passes. Down. One of the few chances that Shepard had a chance to take the lead when they threw those bombs down there to Taylor, it was Devin Fleming that was the guy that got the assignment. He was out there on the island, and he was able to make those plays and, more importantly, not draw any pass interference plays out there playing up against a very difficult matchup for any defensive back in the PSAC. So my player of the game goes to a well-deserving Devin Fleming. Yeah, Devin Fleming today, five tackles, two pass breakups, the two biggest pass breakups of the day for the Bloomsburg defensive back. So definitely well-deserving of it when it felt like the entire team kind of could have been your player of the game just because yeah, that entire defense it was a grinded yeah. out game. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Fleming made some huge plays at the end. So that will do it here for us. Uh, we'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, you'll hear from Colin McLaughlin back in the studio. But for Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, Travis Smith, I'm Nick Verzellini saying so long. Again, your final score here today, Bloomsburg 14, Shepard 10, the Rams return home next week for East Strasburg, and Shepard falls to 7-2. and two. Bloomsburg improves to 2-7. and seven. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. 
with four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords. Financing from 0%. Parsons' goal of financing for all. And Parsons' famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is, it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Hi, Kresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. Welcome into the post-game scoreboard show as my camera acting up, looking up at the ceiling. There we go. Colin McLaughlin here for TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as Shepard unfortunately gets stunned at Bloomsburg and loses for the second time this season. Final score, Bloomsburg 14, Shepard 10. Shepard now seven and two overall. Bloomsburg two and seven. Let's take a look around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference now for some final scores from earlier today. Seton Hill beat Edinburgh thirty-eight to twenty-eight. Cal U fifty-eight. Mercyhurst nineteen. A final score in that one. Lockhaven loses to Westchester. As Westchester comes back, it's a 42-27 statement victory on the road. Slippery Rock beats Clarion 42-14 in comfortable fashion for them. Some other scores final. East Stroudsburg 41, Chippensburg 17. Kutztown survives another one in a low-scoring battle. They hang on to beat Millersville 17 to 12. Gannon comes back against IUP and gets a 16-15 win. And then our final score again, Bloomsburg 14, Shepard 10. As Shepard gets upset on the road at Bloomsburg. WVU, though, good news in the Mountain State, got a win over. UCF earlier today to improve to 5-3, and three, so happy there as the Mountaineers win big, 41-28 to 28 over the UCF Knights in Orlando. Some top 25 scores now in NCAA Division I. We had an upset. Number 6, Oklahoma goes down to Kansas. Kansas wins 38-38. To 33 to give the Oklahoma Sooners their first loss of the year. Number 10, Penn State survived at home against Indiana. They won 33 to 24. Number four, Florida State dominated Wake Forest 41-16. Games currently in action. It's number one, Georgia leading Florida 24 to 7. Number seven, Texas leads BYU 14-0. Number 8, Oregon leads Utah 21-3. Number 14, Notre Dame leads Pitt 14-0. Number 18, Louisville leads number 20, Duke 14-0. Number 22, Tulane leads Rice 17-7. Number 24, USC leads California 17-7. Loser games currently in action later tonight, 7 p.m. Number 5, Washington at Stanford. Number 19, Air Force at Colorado State. Number 21, Tennessee at Kentucky. Then at 7.30, it's number 3, Ohio State at Wisconsin. Vanderbilt at number 12, Ole Miss. 
Colorado at number 23, UCLA. At 8 p.m., it's number 17, North Carolina, Georgia Tech. Old Dominion at number 25, James Madison. And at 10.30, it's number 11, Oregon State at Arizona. That's going to wrap up our post-game scoreboard show on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Again, our final score, Bloomsburg 14, Shepard 10. As the Rams get stunned in Bloomsburg, PA, and fall for its second loss of the season. That wraps things up here. I'm Colin McLaughlin signing off. You've been watching coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd Rams in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's coverage is brought to you by the Small Wood and Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremation Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Freddie Law Firm. TV10 Sports thanks you for